Hello all, we're here. Uh, I'll do a proper introduction in a second. I need to do a ping to let everyone know that we are going live. Publish. Cool, all right. <clears throat> Welcome to our, hold on, I actually hit the start recording button. All right, we're good to go, right? Yes. All right, I know the crazy unthinkable is happening right now. We are ready on time. In fact, even two minutes early for the start of this stream. It is crazy. Um, can people confirm that they can hear us and then we'll get rolling? I'm going to go close the door because, of course, Caesar sensed us. Yeah, that's, that's fine. They might get some Caesar yelling, but whatever. Dan's always very quiet. I'll get her to speak up, though. She's chasing Caesar out of the room right now. Okay, okay, okay. She's on her way back. And we... Oh, you can hear Caesar. I have a very wonderful microphone these days, and... I did not latch the door for Thomas, but... No, that's fair. He's been chewed. <laughs> he's been chewed. All right. I'm going to hit record, and then I'll do a proper introduction. It's March, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 23rd. Okay. Uh, we shouldn't have paused that long. <laughs> Whoops. Hello all and welcome to the March 23rd Dakota's podcast. This one is dubbed Migrations and Mutations Mania because we've already used mayhem and madness and we were running out of M words. So here we are. A couple reasons we're doing this today. I got a big agenda. We're going to race through it as fast as we can. I'm still expecting this to be two hours. I do have a raffle. The raffle does have a mutation semi-custom at the other end of it, so stick around for that. Um, and I think we're ready to rock and roll? I think so. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Okay, so first things first, Festival of Flowers is getting an update! It's not a big to-do. Obviously, there was that whisper slash disaster of gardening was going online, and we didn't really think too hard on it until we were approaching April's Festival of Flowers. And we noticed that now you could get those flowers out of flower produce boxes. And that kind of made things a little complicated. So we have decided that for Festival of Flowers, we're going to replace all the flowers in it with 12? 12? No, 9. 9? I thought Maybe it was 12 flowers. Now I've got to count. It's, I'm, I'm positive this is 12. Because you counted wrap okay we're double checking that we're, we're doing really good but i'm positive it's 12 flowers okay so it's Artoxania. yep one two three Alurus, wow i fucked that up macroactose verifern lacutera serena colas sigma okay so it's 11 and then 12 for soul pool and then 12 for soul pool okay. i was right it's 12 okay so we have 12 new flowers coming one for each region including sicato and a soul pool exclusive flower it's not really exclusive it's just a flower that would grow in the soul pool and those will be the 12 flowers that you grow and you pick during the festival of flowers the recipes for those baskets will be updated um onto these new ones and that being said rather than having it now be four instead of three flowers we decided we would just add a fourth basket called the fruity basket to go with our fluffy feathery and flowery yeah um as well and that will have its said it, but like, oh my god, we messed that up this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. That one will have its own span of companions, so we have a bunch of new companions that are going in there as well. Um I think that's mostly what you need to know. So the current flowers you have on hand will continue to be for gardening exclusives, and the twelve new ones will be part of the festival of flowers, and they will only be for the festival of flowers. You won't grow them at a later time. And that way we have a little more distinction on what's going on there. Dunn picks some really cool ones for every region. Uh, if you go and look at Jill's One Night Art Stand, you can get a glimpse of what we're going to do. It's not super secret. In fact, I got some right here for you to take a look at. In addition to that, it will be, like I said, it will be coming out with new companions as well. There will be a slotless companion, which is that baby calf you see right there. It's adorable. Thank you, Fantasy. 
Uh, we will have a mid-tier companion that is going to be, what was my mid-tier? Caesar, my dude. I'm sorry, all I hear is some meowing and it's short-circuiting my brain right now. I know. Butterflies, I know. your mid-tier is going to be on par with bees. So get out of here. Everyone say hi to Caesar. He's insisted on being here. If, if you're going to be here, then be here. He apparently decided to be quiet. Okay. Now he's wandered into the room. He's going to be quiet. Um, yes, Butterfly will be on the same tier as B and such. Um, we believe it's going to... Yeah. Sorry, it's a questing companion. It's a questing companion. It gets you HP tokens for questing. And that's what it's going to do. And then finally, the last one will be a Flying Fruit Bat. The Flying Fruit Bat will be an Activity Companion. I know, we haven't had one of those in a while. Um, and the Activity Companion is basically going to work similar to a chicken, but it will bring you flowers, fruit, and tree gardening items as an addendum in fishing. So it'll be it's either going to be 1 to 5, 1 to 3. It's going to be very similar to how chicken currently works, and that's the Flying Fruit Bat. So those are the things that are coming out of the Festival of Flowers with the new basket. We suspect that that basket will be very, very wanted this particular run through as everyone catches up on that. We'll have new festival festive variants. As you can see there, I believe that's our wolf variant right there. Mm -hmm. Very cute. So a new festive variant will be coming out for the plushies as well. And Wolfhound is coming and Wolfhound is a CE companion. No. It's a PvP companion, and it's the PvP for the moderate? I think so. No, it's for standards. It's for standards. It's the PvP companion for standards. So Chihuahua, Bull Terrier, all of them, joining them. Yes, it's just joining them. Can you tell that today was a little crazy for me? Like, let me break off for a second. Um, also, if you have questions about that section, go ahead and type them right now. Remember to type them in the Discord. Um, and I'm going to tell you a story of just what it has been to get here today. It has been wow. So Monday, my sister hits me up and she says, hey, I'm going to Mexico. And I'm like, cool, have fun, you and your family. They go to Mexico a lot. I, I don't get it, but they, they do it and they have fun and that's great. And she goes, well, I forgot to get a dog sitter. And I'm like, cool, just take your dog to mom's. That's how it goes. Oh, wait, you have a new puppy. That's right. And so she's like, will you come dog sit for me on Thursday through Sunday? I'm like, yeah, I'll come help you out. And I'm like, I'm just going to go stay at her place. I'll bring my kid with me. Not a big deal. Um, oop. I'm handling it. Thank you. So I get there. And after she's left and we've settled in and I've got both dogs out and we're trying to like sort for the night. That's when I realize. I don't like puppies. And I know, I know how terrible that what sounds. A, what a hot take to say to this group. <laughs> I, I know. I'm not saying that dogs are bad. I'm not saying that puppies are bad or anything like that. Just, my God, Caesar. <laughs> it, they take a lot of attention. Like, a lot of attention. And so she just wanted my 100% attention on top of my three-year-old who wants my 100% attention the other dog that they have, who's kind of mad they have a puppy, but kind of happy that she's there, that wants my 100% attention. And then I came home, and my cat, who's like, you've been gone for 48 hours. I'm like, yeah, I'm here to do a podcast, and I'm going back out. He's like, hmm, I want your full attention. So for the last 48 hours, something under the age of four, with the exception of the cat, who's like eight, has wanted my 100% attention for 24-7. Well, 24-2. I am so oh, right now. And I'm like, okay, get it together. You have to do a podcast. So yeah, festival flowers update coming. Three new companions out of that. Slotless, HP tokens for quests, and certain gardening items as addendums in fishing. That is what I'm trying to communicate. A little <laughs> grace today is all I ask for because I'm a legit crazy person. <laughs> left out the try having to stay up till 2 a.m. to get any time to work on all the other stuff that we have to show in here. Oh, yeah. I was up to like 2 a.m. doing these demos. Well, the, the demo I've got of our new Howl system that's coming later. And the night before, the night before all of this kicked off, I went to bed. And at 6 a.m., I was still staring at the ceiling. I did not sleep. 
So then my coworkers got to deal with me who's been up. By the time I was like in a meeting, I was like, okay, guys, look, I've been up for 36 hours. You're just going to have to deal with whatever you're dealing with today. And they're like, why? And I was like, I couldn't tell you. I just didn't sleep. I've slept since then. That's fine. But I have been up late and then had to get up early because puppies. Okay. So I appreciate with gigantic paws. She's going to be massive. I don't know what my sister is thinking, but here we go. She's four months in the size of a two-year-old Labradoodle. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So do we have any questions on those? Um, I did not see any questions pop up. Oh, cool. See, even when I am that much of a disaster, I explain things so perfectly no one has questions. Or they're too distracted by your chaos. <laughs> <laughs> or they're too distracted by my sheer chaos. Because that's what it could have been called today. Jill is Chaos, the podcast. <laughs> okay. Oh, and a uh, festival of flowers, because Wolfhound was on here, ran into my next point, which is Wolfhound. And in April, we are also going to be releasing something called the Iron Alpha Challenge. Now, those of you who are in Luna, you know what these things are. We have done them before because we're lunatics. But for everyone else in Togos, welcome to the Iron Alpha Challenge. We will have full um, information about it at the April release. But basically the idea is taking a Toko from, I think it's average. We don't think we did, did we demand sub? Yeah, it's average. average. From at least average to alpha with no shortcuts, no HP tokens, no stones of IPAC, no forge gold medals, nothing. No, nothing at all. I think I'll need to check uh, again how inclusive that is, but it may include things like no leadership trait or things. Oh, yeah. No leadership, no inheritance, no com dart. It has to be collabed or non com. Yep. So everything has to be done by you on top of that. You cannot pay for it. And this will be the Iron Alpha Challenge. These are tokos taken to Alpha in the original flow of the game. When there was nothing to help you get there. Luna ran an entire contest like this. We were like, Iron Alpha Challenge. We prepped for like a month. We were like, everyone find a toko. We, we had rules about how many markings your toko had to have. So, so you couldn't do albinos and such. And we went to put them in. The contest ended in a week. That's right. In our little crazy tribe, someone literally took their toko from average to alpha. In a week, with no shortcuts, pure art. Yeah, they're crazy. But Iron Alpha's coming. There's a little back and forth right now. Um, oh, things I'm supposed to tell you. Quester does not apply to anything you get out of the Iron Alpha challenge. So even though it's kind of like a quest, you don't get any quester bonuses. Um, oh, you can... Da -da -da. There is a design, there is rules on how many markings and such that you can get from it. So your design for your toko does have to qualify and there is a thread you can go in and have your qualification checked. So you can't take an albino as part of the Iron Elf challenge. It does have to have some meat on it. There does need to be a challenge portion of the challenge. Well, Saskia has shown up and said she can throw the link to the page. The prompts aren't finished though. Yes, throw the link to the page. Prompts aren't finished. Everything on this can change and may change before we officially release it. This is just your preview. So I'll set you over on the link. Go find it in Discord. Um, and then finally, if if you do this, and it, as of right now, I believe we are pushing, you do this once. It's a one-time challenge. And if you do it, then we are going to present you with a very sparkly semi-upgrade token of your choice. So that would be a rare main, a mutation, a UT, a darker base of your choice. But you can only do it once, so think careful about it. Cool. If you have questions about the Iron Alpha Challenge, um, go ahead and toss them down right now. Because, you know, I'll answer them as best I can. Alcestia is here. I'm sure she will back me up in answering these questions. And just drop the link in podcast chatter for you all to take a look at. And the link is in podcast chatter. So that is the Iron Alpha Challenge. Luna, I expect you all to do this. 
actually, I don't expect you all to do this. I will at some point, but, you know, probably going to take me longer than a week these days. Okay, so um, what about HP that comes from scoring average accidentally rolls and can't be eliminated? It's just manual overrides of all images a la Helena. I believe the HP that you get from things that, like awards that give you HP is fine. Yes. And once Jill has some bandwidth, I... Rhea and I talked out a coding toggle on the HP tracker to possibly turn off applied HP for people who are registered as an iron alpha so we have a way to override that. But this is literally the first time you've heard it on this podcast in front of everybody. You're welcome. Okay, so we'll, we'll look on doing some quality of life updates to make it easier to track your iron alpha. Um, but yeah, things that naturally apply from winning an award and such. Oh, they couldn't hear me at all for that. Okay, I'll do that again. So things that naturally apply. The Sorry, the question was, what about HP you get from winning awards or things of that nature? Not things from inheritance, not things from this, but like the bonus HP you get for doing AOAs. Or bonding. Or bonding. Does that not count? The answer is that counts because that's natural HP that a toko gets in the natural flow of gameplay. There was no extra trait applied. There was no extra anything. So those things will be allowed. Those little bits of applied HP will be allowed. But the other applied HP, things you get from other tokos that are shortcuts, they don't count. And Re and Dunn have been talking out, what if we do a toggle on the page? So if your toko is registered as an iron alpha, then you can flip that toggle and it'll take off anything that would not apply to make it easier to track. They surprised me with it on the podcast, but I have no issue with it. It's just all about capacity. It'll need to happen after the uh, Howl system is done. Okay, did that answer the question? Yeah? I think so. Okay, any other questions? Yes, many others. Okay. Would an albino lowmark with custom items that would make it a more complex character to draw be a possible exception, or might that route be considered? Um, off the top of the head, could imagine verifying the items are depicted properly might be an issue. We don't actually require decor to ever be depicted, so that would make checking this a lot more intensive. Yeah, we never require decor. We actually even don't require your physical traits to be properly on the toko. And it just needs to look vaguely like the actual build type that it is. So albinos are a no. Um, no matter how much decor or paint you have going on on them, albinos are a no because it adds a significant amount of work onto the people checking them um, to check your decor and to make sure it's accurate. Like, I hear you. We will find you a toko to do iron alpha with, but albinos are a no. confusion about IPAX inheritance if you don't own both parents you can't change that and like get applied in a challenge would the toggle take care of that um with the toggle we'll go ahead and take care of that for you we'll just turn off everything that's not like award hp that's automatically applied award hp i think is fine um obviously we'll talk it out we'll make sure it's, it's clean so when the toggle goes on if it doesn't show up on the toggle it doesn't count and we'll ignore it for things of that applied nature we won't ignore, I commissioned someone to do X, because that's not in the spirit of what's going on. It's supposed to be um, yourself or a collab, because we love collabs here. This this world runs in collaboration, and I'll go for it. If we can allow you to, we will. I think there's very few things that don't allow you to collab anymore. Yeah, I think we've opened most things up. Yeah, bonding, taming, all of that's gone to the collab land, because there's no reason not to. Um, but, yeah, if, if things that are outside of your control we will we will take off. And I think we can probably ignore the totems for you because there's no point in, like denying your other tokos the HP just because you're after this one. So we're going to facilitate this as best we can for people so it's not confusing. But the tracker may come a week or two into this. Remember, the goal is not to do it in April. The goal is this is for everyone to do forevermore. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Yeah. For some of us, it's going to be a sprint. But for the vast majority of tokos, it's going to be a marathon. Idea on how many markings will be the minimum. So on the page right now, we have a minimum of three visible colors that does not include min-marked eyes or nose, and no more than 80%, like 
you can't have a max piebald that is 80% white. It has to be evenly, more evenly distributed than that. Mm -hmm. And of course, we will validate your toco before you begin. We are not going to make someone run all the way to alpha and then be like, oh, that toco didn't qualify. Sorry. Like that would be a real dick move. And we're not going to do that. That's why we're going to have the qualification thread for the Iron Alpha Challenge. And this doesn't, like, close, guys, to be very clear. Uh, girls, this guys, is, and all. This is a quest chain. It stays open. Yeah, it's a quest chain. This stays open forevermore. If you're not going to get around to it, you aren't going to have the right toko until October. Cool. That's fine. All right. What else I got? If prompt one requires a clean slate, could someone theoretically remove any HP from their tracker and add it later? Does the upload date of art lit get checked against prior prompt passing date? That's an edge case. I don't think we've talked it out, but I don't see why if you're not. I think for Clean Slate, when we did it for Luna, it was no AOAs, no RODs, nothing mm -hmm. like that on it. No HP tokens. Except yeah. for subs. Subs could have HP tokens to bring them to average. Yeah, we allowed the sub to average HP tokens to happen, um, but... As long as it doesn't have anything in the applied HP category, allowed applied HP, it should be okay. Just pull it off your tracker. If you think that we are going to spend time digging through your gallery to see if you drew two pictures of this toko before you put it in for Iron Alpha, you're the crazy person. <laughs> That's a little intense, Joe. <laughs> Why? <laughs> but it's true. Like, we're not... We're not going to go running. Like, if, if you've got the applied HP, we're going to know you did AOAs before this. Um, and we'll need to sort it out. Maybe we can have exceptions where we make you redo those AOAs to replace that HP. But I, I don't know. Nice edge case. We'll talk it out. We'll try and have an answer for you fully at the release of this in April. Okay. It's a lot more questions than I expected. But, yeah. What else? I mean, Iron Alpha is exciting. Iron Alpha is super exciting. Okay. You know that we'll be doing it. Of course we were, we're going to do it before prizes were ever set. We were like, yes. Yeah, we're doing this. Now it's just cool prizes. I kind of wish I I wish this had existed so I could do this with Leica mm. or Novak. Leica and Alfred would be fun to run this. Yeah. Or Arumi and Novak. Maybe we'll get a tall tax and tall Daz and do this. Yeah, we could maybe do that. All right, anything else? Uh, there are people typing. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <laughs> well, well, you guys type the, t the question. <laughs> type your questions. I'm going to move to the next point real quick because it's super fast. And it'll give you time to type. Uh, just so you know, we are doing a designer cleanup on Tacotene. We put that field on the import search so that you could search by designer. Um, so we put that in there. We didn't put it in the same as the normal search field because if you were searching for tokos owned by somebody, we didn't want you to get all of the ones that they designed as well. That wasn't going to be super helpful. Also, the way that that is saved is special and awesome so that their username will change as their username changes on Takone. Well, when we did that, a bunch of people learned that a ton of things they did weren't tagged. So Dunn took uh, it upon her. Shout out to Kep and Locke for making me aware of this. Yes. So Kep and Locke were talking about it. I didn't say complaining, everybody. I said talking. They were saying, oh, look at this and how much work is this going to be to go and get it fixed, which I don't blame them. Locke, it was a lot of work. Locke took the time to put 100 comments in. I'm so sorry, Locke. <laughs> so Dunn did an export from the database. And it turns out most of the, actually not turns out, unsurprisingly, most of the problems exist from before Tacotene was the norm. Because now everybody tags the designers much more correctly than they used to. And people's names have changed. And their names changed before we moved. And so we couldn't match it. Well, Dunn did an export and found all of them. And she is in the middle of a massive cleanup project of cleaning them up. I think about 7,000 have been cleaned so far. No, out of the 30,000 that were messed up, I think 18,000 have, 18, have now been cleaned up. Okay, so about 18,000 have been cleaned up. So you will see a bunch more um, that will be showing up. But we still have like 12,000-ish to clean. As it cleans, we'll put them in the system. When we're totally done, we'll let you know. And at that point, if you see a messed up design credit, come on over to Kotne Errors. We will get you sorted, but most of it should be cleaned up. It was just old data, and it never previously mattered because it wasn't a searchable field. Yeah, I see, I see you making a face. Speak. Um, like, I, don't, I don't know if we explained that. Like, So things that would look like they're properly tagged for you but weren't 
like the square bracket thing. I don't know if explaining that helps at all or just confuses the issue entirely. They were old and they didn't have the square brackets. Simple as that. That's all it is. They were old and they didn't have the square brackets. And we don't blame you for not going through 30,000 tokos to figure out if they were tagged correctly. We didn't do it. Why would you? Now we are. So just so you know, that's happening. If you have questions, drop it. But I'm pretty sure that's self-explanatory. And I will snake myself right back on over to the Iron the Alpha que questions. The Iron Alpha questions. Yep. All right. Next one. Bring it on. Can you have art uploaded like it wasn't counted or anything, but it was up before each stage of the confirmation? Does it make sense? As long as it's not on the tracker, I don't think it matters. As long as it's not on the tracker, it should be fine. We're not going to go searching for it. Um, perhaps putting the cart before the horse, but depending on turnout, is there any chance in the future for a much smaller reward for repeating the quest? We've not talked about repeating quest chains before. Well, I am very against repeating quest chains because... We planned prizes with the explicit purpose of you were doing it once. That's why they were bigger. That's why they were better. It, repeating, I'm not so sure on. it. I can put it as a thought for next year. And but we can talk we about it. more questions. Yeah, we really need more questions out before we really talk about repeating questions. And that's not pressure on our quest master. Exactly. Like, that. Also, Alcestia is doing most of this on her own and then running it by the team and getting input and feedback as she puts these things out. And she um, I, I said she committed herself to Iron Alpha for April, which makes me super happy. But if it's May, it's May. Like, we're not going to be like, how dare you not get that done while we are all working on a thousand other things? Thanks, DA. Yeah, thanks, DA. Um, so, yeah. I will put that in the back burner for 2025 yeah for 2025 and we can talk about it then it'll be here sooner than you think okay a question on the design cleanup yep should i delete my import error comments you do not have to you don't have to go delete them at some point in time someone's going to respond to like the first one and be like we fixed all of these i'm not commenting on the well, rest i was actually just going to put like a like a comment in the thread of like design cleanup done here yeah and then We'll just not scroll down. And just not scroll down. So, no. It's entirely you, up to you. <laughs> you don't have important. to. We'll make it work either way. All right. <clears throat> Anything else? What else I got? Okay. So, for the... I think there's discussion going on podcast questions. Um, I'll leave it over okay. there. Okay. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. So, no questions for the stream, though. I think I think that's it. They're just that that's just running. Okay, cool. <clears throat> so, now we've got kind of our. You skipped something. No, I didn't. Oh no, you didn't. No, we moved it down. Done trying to tell me I don't know how to read an agenda. Okay, so we talked about. Festival of Flowers, new things coming out in April, the design cleanup. So there's our warm up. As you can see, we're talking smarter and faster and all of that. Now we move on to the next, or technically the first, big point of this podcast. Why are we 30 minutes in? Because there's a lot, okay? <laughs> you, you remember on last weekend when I was like, oh, let me set this podcast. And you go, we don't have enough for a podcast at all. And I was like, what are you talking about? There's so much for a podcast. And you're like, no, no, there's not. And I'm even... I'm just very quiet for everybody. Mm. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Is that better? Testing, testing, one, two, three. Your thing doesn't light up for me. I can't be sure. Careful on your game. Is this too loud for everybody? Talking, talking. Is this better? Hmm. Hello? No, it's quieter. What did you do? All right. Testing. More testing. Testing. Don't touch that dial, Jill. <laughs> okay. Nope. Oh, oh gosh. We made it worse. Can you guys hear me? Because I can hear me in my ears real loud. Okay. Fantasies. Ooh. What? Okay, some people are saying yes, some people are saying no. 
Guys, it can't be both at the same time. That's not how that works. Um, shoot. Okay, so some people are saying excellent. They can hear you. They can hear you better. Did Alan, was Alan using this setup? Of course Alan was using this. Don't don't kid yourself. Oh, so he messed with everything. Well. Is the other one supposed to be all the way to the left on that dial? The other one doesn't matter. There's not a second microphone. Oh, you really should invest in a second microphone. Okay. So you can all hear me. I'm just going to have to tell Dunn to yell. I am yelling. That is not yelling. I am yelling. <laughs> that is closer to yelling. Oh, God, this is going to be a nightmare at TokoCon. Yeah, yeah, it is. But I can see it green every time I talk, so I know they can hear me. I cannot see it turning green. I am talking really loud. I am in your bubble. Oh, we got a flicker of green. Okay, cool. Technical problems mid-podcast. Woo! And you know what? I just did that, but because oh. of... Network error. Yep. People are saying... That I'm cutting off? Okay. Um, I think Twitch or us was having an issue. Yeah? Okay. All right. We're going to just sit here and chit-chat for the next 15 seconds or so. Let us know how you can hear us. Jill, you should be talking too. Oh, well, I was letting you talk. Jeez, I was trying not to overwhelm them with the sound of both of our voices at once. What are you talking about? That's kind of what they're here for. Yeah, that, that's fair. So I just did all that work of getting done louder, and I'm about to move the microphone because I have to get back to my computer screen for the next thing. Okay, but you project enough that you don't need to move the microphone. I'm sorry, the microphone will be behind me. Yes, I will. Mm. Yeah. Seems it might have been Twitch. Everybody reloaded and it's... Oh. We broke okay. Twitch. High five. Hey. <laughs> Ow. I'm sorry. You, you oh, missed. Oh, jeez. Ow. I'm sorry. You missed. I'm trying to break my hands. <sighs> Aim for the palm. I wasn't aiming. I put my hand up. You're the only one who aimed. Well, that's the problem now, isn't it? Aren't you supposed to like look at the shoulder or the elbow or something? Yeah, it's the elbow. Yeah, look at the elbow and you'll never miss, which is weird, but somehow true. Okay, we seem to be good now. Well, it's just like how to navigate through a crowd. If you look past a person, they will naturally move out of your way. You just have to look like you're determined to walking past them. I have a lot of comments about that, but I'm not going to make them on this podcast. What? I've been in a crowd with you. Shut up. <laughs> Oh, that would that would make sense. Pax is screwing it up for us. All right, so. Oh, is Pax going on right now? Pax East. Oh yeah. Probably overwhelming Twitch. Man, you picked a great day for this. Oh, whatever, like. <laughs> with a live demo, no less. With a live demo, woo. I there thought I threatened your demo, Gremlins. What is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're moving on. Ugh. Okay, I need to apparently just lean on your joke. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to spin your chair. Yeah, Dunn just commandeered my chair and sent me spinning. <laughs> Look, you're going to have to lean in. I am leaning in. Okay. You're going to have to lean wow, in. you moved it so far away. I did move it so far away because I need to see this because I'm trying to show the mutations. Hi, everybody. <laughs> It's all about mutations now, okay? <laughs> okay. My entire train of thought is just absolutely gone. I have no clue what we were doing. I was You're trying welcome. to bring up that we needed to talk about mutations, and then everyone got super distracted about how loud Dunn was, and it was a whole thing. So, <laughs> let's start from the top of mutations. We have known that we need to do a mutations rebalance for a while. But Craft Mageddon took over December, and there was just no time for any other project at all during December. It consumed like 200 plus hours of my December. Yeah, I got some nice quota in December. That being said, mutations got put on the back burner. And then decisions got made to put tributes to the fate out because of some shuffling that happened in Advent, and it was just kind of like, filling a gap that appeared that wasn't supposed to be there. So we put Tribute out. Um, tribute was kind of thrown into the mutation mania 
and it's caused a problem, like a legitimate problem in our system that has to be addressed. End of story. And in going in to address it, I was looking at mutations and went, damn it, I am going to have to address all of mutations in a single go because it doesn't make sense to stopgap this to December. So we are having a mini mutation rebalance. I have two options for us to go over. First thing I'll do is I will go through the current setup and then I'll walk you through the two suggested setups and we'll we'll go from there. Okay? Sorry, I can't lean on your chair. It's so uncomfortable. Yeah, no, that that's fine. We'll just move the microphone as we usually do. We do, but you were so set that we didn't do it today and now no one can hear you. Mm. It's almost like I was right. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, math time. Math, yeah, it's math time, everybody. You gotta turn off your, your uh, image. I do, I do. Give me a second. I actually need to move tabs, and then I'll turn it off. Ba bam. Throw me into the current tab. All right, and then drag this one up. Hi, everyone. It is time to talk about mutations, and I have a spreadsheet. Now, when I go into my spreadsheet, I will no longer be able to see your comments. But based on Dunn's reaction, I will know what's going on. Okay. <clears throat> so let's do the, the basic of setting up the correct terminology so that everyone understands what we're talking about. When we talk about mutations, there are three types of mutations. There are non-hereditary, meaning they only show up randomly. Examples being albino chimeras. Yes, there's traits and things you can do to like increase the chances that they're going to appear, but they randomly appear. They're not lineage locked in any capacity, um, and those are the non-hereditaries. There are hereditaries, such as iridescent, obsidian, uh, melanism. All of those follow a lineage line. Yeah, we have like new beginnings of those, but they all trace back to something that has melanism in it or iridescence in it, something of that nature. They are hereditary. They only appear in breedings when one of the parents has it, with the exception of things that get you around those rules. I think nightmare being like one of them. Mm -hmm. And then there are hybrids. Hybrids mean that they do both. That would be cross marbled. There are situations you can set up where a random cross would appear. And then there are situations and then you can do ones with the parents and increase the chance of that cross passing. So those would be hybrids. For the sake of this, we do treat them differently. So when you see on here, you'll see random marbled, random cross. Those are when they randomly show up. That's the non-hereditary version. And then you will also see marbled and cross, which is the hereditary version. And they have different numbers because they have different numbers in general. Okay? So that's how that's going to look. These are the current actual numbers. Um... I know you're looking at base odd thousand and you're like, how does that translate to half a percent? Math. Math is the answer. Um, there is a, a whole mathematics that's going on here where it kind of like gets you a base odds number. You apply everything. You get to a final number. And then that's rolled. Um, and a one to a five passes the mutation or, or procs the mutation in some variety. And then the rest doesn't. And you're, you're, range of one to five is modified by whatever your base odd is kind of like how taming works if you've gone and looked at the taming calculator there's nothing in our system that changes your range your range is always one to five everything else in the system changes that base odds number which is the, how big of a pool you're rolling in okay so that's what you're looking at and that's how it comes to this little percentage additionally i've gone ahead and added into here how everything else works. You guys are set. Da -da -da, da -da -da, max. Deny. Oh crap, those may not be accurate. That's okay. Don't worry, don't worry about that last column. Uh, Cause that last column's terrible anyway. So here's what happened. Everything in our system was done with percentages until we got to tribute and we knew that we wanted to do rebalance 
And we just said, uh, let tribute take a static number off. Um, it'll be powerful that way and go, go. But we didn't think it through. I fully admit that it didn't get thought through. It was a last minute decision to put it in. Then we had to get it thrown in the calculator really fast, or excuse me, the breeding roller really fast. Um, it got overwritten at one point, <laughs> the breeding roller, and had to get put back in. And I'm not saying that it got messed up on the second in. That's not it at all. Um, I'm just saying like there's a lot of confusion surrounding getting it done. That's what I'm I'm echoing. Um, but it, I put it in at least the first time. I'm not sure if I did it the second time. I can't remember. It was kind of a crazy December, January open time. So we did a static number, and that static number greatly affected odds, like significantly affected odds. To give you a a basic idea. Um, like, in many cases, it took things like, so this max without tribute is if you had two parents, um, Maja 2, and Faction, you had a just shy of a 7% chance. When we took tribute into it, it moved to a 20. That was never supposed to work like that. Completely and utterly unintended to work like that. It was not supposed to be that powerful. And situations arose... Because of that, with some of our super passable ones, like, someone explained to me why Reversal had such low pass odds, because I have no idea. It's always been like that as far as I know. I don't think there was really a rhyme or a reason to how mutations were passing previously. Um, and their numbers come across slightly differently because of some have requirements up front and others don't. Reversal had no requirements up front and just a super low number, and I couldn't explain it to you. So if you always felt like Reversal passed easier, it did. It legitly did. Um, but when Tribute got mixed in with that, if you go look at my line 10 here, when Tribute got mixed in with that, it literally moved Reversal into the negative. Yeah. And that meant breedings of 100% Reversal if you were maxed out with a large tribute um and it only happened on i think large tributes but yeah so that's a that's a mess we can't have that happen for the moment and i think i posted it in general chat i may have put it in the announcements in general chat i'm, I'm not sure if i did when i found it i patched it i just put a minimum um base odds that you could have and if you went lower than that then it pulled you back up to that number that is just to get us through um, the the day. So I think the base number is 75, which was the lowest you could roll. It might be 100. I would need to go and double check. But basically there was a minimum number that you could reach and you couldn't get lower than that. It does have the unintended consequence where if you are fully, fully maxed out with tribute, you might be not getting the full amount of your, your minus. But we had to put it in because you couldn't have breedings where you rolled 100% of the litter with that mutation. Please understand why we had to make that decision and do it the way that we did. But this is where it currently stands. This is a mess. And, and I'm not going to justify the mess because veins were a mess before we got in there. Um, and most of these have been untouched by any hands since the people who put them in in the first place. Sorry, that's right. <clears throat> Most of these are untouched since the very initial inception of the breeding roller. Yep. They've just been moved on to the new roller. Um, they've been put in with like about the same percentage chances that they had in the old roller. And there's no rhyme or reason. Uh, if I went back in time to ask the original admins, so how'd you pick these numbers? They'd go, I don't know. They seemed pretty big. That, that's what it would be. Like they, they'd have some sort of reason, but it would come down to an arbitrary reason. In all fairness, many of the decisions that I make about how rarity is going to work is arbitrary and I use a mathematical equation to at least standardize it. That's about it. To so, be fair, the three that we put in the system were modeled off old mutations. Yeah, so they aren't any better. So, yeah, we are talking about having to do this rebalance. And I, oh, for anyone who, who noticed it, I did add a little chart down here about the real pass rates of Harley. So, uh... In math, basically you can take what is the this pass rate right here, the 6% pass rate, and then I apply that 6% pass rate, um, and this is without tribute, of course, because and I apply that to here to be like, okay, what's the real pass rate? 
Um, and with what is the most common breeding, which will be a toka with Merle and toka without Merle, uh, with Harley, the actual chance of Harley passing goes from 6.67%. Oh, actually, that's probably even a little too high, I think. It's more like 2% down to 0.25%. So when you felt like Harley wasn't passing easily, you were correct. 100% correct. Now, these numbers are obviously kind of like averaged out a little bit. Um, but And they're based on like having maximum bonuses, maximum bonuses without tribute, maximum this, that, or thing. They're based on having two parents, things of that nature. That's why... Take into account IFO or anything that would boost your Merle chance. Exactly. We're not taking into anything that would boost your Merle chance. Like Borga's Blessing can be used to uh, to boost it. Uh, IFO IFO is used to boost it. Borga's Blessing is the cruelty. I thought you you could choose it to increase... I'm thinking of offering to the gods. Offering of the gods could be used to increase it. Obviously, I'm not accounting for all of that. So if you had those, your numbers were a little different. They were better or they were worse. Apparently, if you use Borgus Blessing in a Harley breeding, you were hurting yourself. Well, no, Borgus Blessing only affects ECs and Cs. Is it? Yeah, and Merles are oh. uncommon. Never mind. Ignore that last statement. So, but these were closer to your real pass rates. So this is the current status of mutations. It is changing. Exactly how it's going to change. We're going to talk about the two ideas I have running today. We're going to get feedback. Yes, we're kind of running at a sprint on this one. So whatever I implement in April, given how it usually works, probably won't be the final iteration of it. It'll go another like two or three months where people are giving me feedback where, and we're tweaking it as fairly as we can. When it comes to breeding changes, we really try not to do the mid-month because it's not fair to people who put their breedings in early, right? Or to people who put their breedings in late, depending on what the change is. So we do tend to do them when breeding is closed. Obviously, I made the choice on the the reversal that I would do it mid-month because of what it was. Thankfully, I don't think a significant amount of breedings were affected by it because tribute is not everywhere and you do have to spend things on it. It is a UT So thankfully, I don't think it's everywhere just yet. Okay, so I'm going to ask for questions. Um, Don't ask me why a number is the way that it is. I can't answer that question. I don't know. I don't know why these decisions were made. I mean, we can answer for Harley and Obsidian Iridescent. Yeah, Yeah, but I'm going to tell you I based it off of Marbled, marbled, (laughs) which hit the system right before I think Paws and Bark and me took power. So while everybody's typing their questions, I'm sure there are questions. Seer found the original rolling dock for reversal. You want to you want to take a guess what it is? You can't see. You have to take a guess. Like it's it's like it's pass rate? Yeah. 1 out of 5000. Reversal. 1 to 5 out of 200 if one parent is reversal. 1 to 5 out of 50 if both parents are reversal. <laughs> Your face is great. The hell? <laughs> That's just a marking at that point. Ooh. Ooh, spicy. Well, it is. <laughs> That's just a marking at that point. Jeez. Oh, I think Farion couldn't hear me. Okay, <laughs> Some so. Some people heard me. Seer found the. Oh, wait, could... no. Farion heard me. <laughs> yeah. Seer and Islua are basically Takone's historians. <laughs> they know everything about all of the old stuff. And I'm just like, why did these things happen? Ah, uh, maybe we'll do a histories of Toko. A his, oh no, that that'd end up being really sassy. It would end up being sassy if I tried to do a history of Tokone panel at TokoCon. But not if Seer does it. Oh, it might still be sassy, but she won't get in trouble for it. <laughs> okay, how them questions going? Nobody's typing questions, and I'm kind of shocked by it right now. Well, I mean, there. We, we, are you going to question me on the current numbers, yeah. right? Like that, that's how they stand. I can clarify something, but they know it's changing. Seer says I could talk so much about Toko history. Yeah, I, I bet she could. Do it, do it, do it. Okay, so now we have to address some things that I found when I was doing this and explain them. 
So anyone who's looking at this, and we'll just use uh, reversal because it's so easy to read. You notice how the base odds are 300? And then as soon as you get to one parent, it goes to 150. And this is hereditary, so there's no situation in which it's not got at least one parent. I don't know why it works like that. I, I am not throwing shade at anyone who worked on the roller. That is not what is happening right now. I am positive that they just moved it over as it existed. And I am positive the original breeding roller creators probably raised an eyebrow, said, are you sure? And then implemented it. Because that's what you would have done? Because it's what I would have done in the infancy of my coding. <laughs> and I am sure they did something similar. Um, and I'm not even throwing shade on old admins. I am just having a WTF moment. Because, so you're telling me that my base odds are cut in half the moment I have a parent. Huh. So 300 was never the base odds. Okay, cool. Good to know that. But we're all treating it like it is. We're all building bonuses like it is. But it's not. So, with the new system, I'm fixing that problem. Base odds will be base odds. So if you... If there are parents involved, the base odds are the odds when you have at least one parent. And then when the second parent comes in, we'll implement the second parent bonus at that point, And we will cut your odds. So your base odds will actually be your base odds at some point in time. Yes, this does change math. Yes, this does mean I have to account for it further down the line. I fully understand that. Okay. Um. Let's talk the modifiers real quick so you can understand where I was coming from on that. Uh, this is my spot where I can update the modifiers and it'll trickle across my two working sheets. Um, and I'll explain what was different. So in the original system, one parent gave you a 0.5 modifier. That meant it cut things in half. That was the crazy I was just talking about. And then the second parent would do a 0.25. Oh, uh, that 0.73, that's, um, that's the oh, cumulative that's the... of Maja. Yeah, there yeah I just cleaned that up. So it, it would, like, then cut another 25% off of that. And I was just like, what in the world? That is crazy. Especially because Maja comes in right behind that and cuts your odds in half again. And I was like, what? That is way, way, way powerful. These bonuses are, like, stupidly powerful. And then Maja's too. The way it's written in the system... If you go and if you found the code, it cuts it in half to fifty. It cuts it by fifty percent, and then it cuts it to seventy-five percent of that fifty percent. In the world of math, that means three seven five. It's thirty-seven point five. Fifty percent times seventy-five percent. That's what it is. So I just streamlined that, and then faction gave you a point eight. So these are percentages on percentages upon percentages upon percentages to make these crazy numbers across the board. Let and me this is order of operations. Yeah, this is also the order of operations in which it happens. So if you don't have draw, then faction is the next thing that comes into play. So it would go from one parent, two parent, to faction, then to small, large tribute. So this is the order of operations that was in. The small to large tribute was 25 and 50. So... The number would be like, because these other ones are so powerful, so powerful, you would get to it and you'd be like, okay, so I have 75 for, um, or I'd have like 50 or in some cases 25 for the, the, the final number and then tribute would come and slice 50 off of that. Do you see how insanely powerful that is? So tribute has to change. Um, the way parents work needed to change because I need a little more control over what's going on with that um, in general. Maja, I really feel like it needs to change, but I think I'm outvoted on that, um, how it currently works. I really feel like it does, but in changing it, it would make every mutation harder to get. So that's a, a fight I think I'm losing, but I guess I'm at peace with losing it. Um, and then factions remaining at that point eight that you see right now. And when I say that, um, let me get a good example. If you have 
100, if 100 is the number you're looking at, and then fraction is applied to it and it's 0.8, the remaining number will be 80. Your remaining number will be 80% of what was ever the number was. So as I say, percentages, percentages, percentages down. I know. I formulated it myself so that I wouldn't have to deal with it. And that's what this is. So uh, things to be sure of. Parents are changing. Base odds are base odds. So one parent does no longer lower your odds. It just gives you your chance, which you wouldn't have. One parent, two parent has no effect on non-hereditaries. Don't worry about it. This is only hereditaries. Um, Maja, not changing. Faction, not changing. Tribute, changing. Small tribute will give you 90% of those, those odds. So it's a 10% reduction. And large tribute is a 20% reduction. Okay? So large tribute is the same as a faction reduction. It's just in the order of operations because they're percentages, it's diminishing return. Because 80% of 100 is 80. But then it's 80% of 80. You don't get a, another full 20 off of that. You'd come across, I think you'd end up with like 75, 72, 70, somewhere in there. They get, there, there would be a number that you would come across. So, yay math. Is everybody okay? Is everybody following how these diminish as we go because we switched them all to percentages? Yeah, the general, the general consensus is not to change Maja's. I figured it was going to be not to change Maja's. As a proponent of not changing Maja's, it's an ER trait. The upgrade requires a heart. So, you know. Maja's 2 and Mimic are about equitable and power, and they both require hearts. So. I suppose. I know, I know. I suppose. We have had some contentious things on this one. Yeah, yeah. Dun and I have had some contentious 3 a.m. mornings. We weren't screaming at each other. That's not fair. But there was definitely some harsh tones. And then we went, it's 3 o'clock in the morning. Why are we talking about this? We need to do it tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here's a question. If oh. you actually want a question. Yeah, yeah, I'll take a question. Will the final mutation numbers be made indefinitely public for viewing either in a spreadsheet or all of the main calculator? What's the point of telling you them all right now if I'm never going to tell you them again? Yeah, everything will be public. We'll make a calculator because we all love calculators. I'll, if I can find capacity, I'll make a calculator. Otherwise, I'll just put the mathematical equation up and then I'll set it up in a way that you can plug your numbers in and find out your final formula. <laughs> it's like, uh, I think I think it's this one. I'll be like, okay, here you go. Here's what your odds come across as. Um, speaking of, yeah, yeah. This is every possible combination. There are 18 possible combinations that create 18 different numbers <laughs> that could be your base pass rates. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was trying to balance over the last week. I ended up making this 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 chart so I could reference it because it was so confusing. Whew. And then this is working with the new proposal of numbers, which was like moving uh, tributes to the percentages, not the flat numbers. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. All right. Now I'm ready to actually show you my two possible ways that we're going to do this one of them oh hold on i lied not by part not not on purpose but i did i have to talk about the other things that i absolutely know are changing so you know that as we move in oh do you need your agenda yeah where's my here, agenda here, 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 here. i'll just turn oh well, hold on i can actually get to it here okay i can get to it here okay so base odds are changing but that's only because Parent one, parent two is changing. So it's not as drastic as it sounds, but base odds are changing basically across the board here. Cross numbers are going to go up. In some way, cross needs to go up so it has room to move. Um, chimera numbers are going down. So when I say that, I mean the base odds for cross are going up. The base odds for chimera are coming down. Um... Tribute is definitely going to be a percentage. Tribute is what broke things. Tribute is what forced this to happen before December. But regardless of that, these changes and this conversation would have happened in December. It's just happening in March because of tribute. But this was always on our plan to look at these and do these things. So don't be like, 
well, just because you guys screwed up tribute, now we don't get our mutations. That's no, 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 guys. This was going to happen regardless. This was supposed to happen last December, but crafting, I might have underestimated. Severely underestimated. Mm -hmm. 300 hours plus of my life. You said 200. Yeah, and the more I thought about it, the more I realized it underestimated. <laughs> um, and here's, here's at least a good thing. <laughs> So we talked about Harley. We talked Harley to death, and I showed you the numbers, and it's really hard to balance Harley, and we don't really want to encourage double mutation breedings. So an idea has come to us. Not double mutation. You meant double Merle. I really meant double Merle. Um, the idea has come that what we're going to do with Harley is we're just going to roll, if Harley is possible in the breedings, like one of the parents has Harley, we will roll the breeding. We will roll Harley as normal. It will use the numbers that we provide today. If it rolls success on Harley and the pup doesn't have Merle, we'll just add Merle. Do it like we do in Gaskin. We don't, when we're doing like Gaskin mutations, everything gets numbers based on things that were put in, da, da, da. Then we roll and we're like, oh, it's a Harley. Well, we don't say you don't get a Harley because your random Gino that you had zero control over didn't have Merle. We just add Merle. And if it's got too many markings, we'll pull a, a, lesser common one off to make room for it we're not even going to do that in this case we're just going to add merle so your harley numbers will match the other mutations you will run off of the actual harley numbers and then if it, the geno doesn't have merle we'll just add merle tack a color of points on there that matches the, the breeding and away we go so harley's numbers are significantly going up to be brought in line with other mutations wherever we choose to put it. Any confusion over those things that are definitely happening regardless of the final outcome of the numbers. Oh, she's she's typing with a maniacal grin. Oh, I'm just teasing Cray. Oh, yeah. Fair enough. She has a motorcycle. You don't get a Harley. I'm like, well, we, we did steal Cray's Harley. Well, not Harley, but you know. We did steal Cray's motorcycle. It's true. <laughs> Okay, so, cool, 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 cool. That is done. Uh, let's start with Rarity. The other one says working. It only says working because I hadn't come up with a fun name for it yet. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about Rarity. So I had this idea of what if we assign a Rarity to each mutation, kind of like we do for mains and all of that, is, is a way to make them a little different without... You know, just doing everything the exact same. Like, I kind of thought about that. I like it. That is that is more of my vibe. It also means that you can quantify which mutations are actually rarer than other mutations, which ones are harder to go for. It gives you a reason to pick one over another with tribute. Because remember, with tribute, you can only pick one mutation. You don't get a bonus on all of them. You get the bonus on whichever one you picked. And that includes up and down. So... We were contemplating that in general, and I kind of came up with a common, uncommon, rare, and the the majority reason behind where something fell in rarity was how much design choice you would have. Things like melanism kind of take away a lot of design choices, so I made it common. Albino takes away a lot of design choices, so common. Things that don't take away a ton of design choices, like Chimera. Chimera actually opens up Brindle and Patching, and you can have two different designs in a go. Like, there's a lot of choice there. Um, iridescent and Marbled tend to give a lot of choice. They were rare. And then things that fell in between them, I put them in Uncommon, or a couple of them I shuffled down, like Cross I shuffled down, just because Cross had been more common before. And even though I said the numbers were going up, that didn't necessarily mean I wanted it to be like rare rare so i kind of shuffled that one down to common as well and that's the the general idea of where why things fell the way that they were there is also the the notion here that non-hereditary mutations are have a bigger base odd than non or than hereditary ones so the random ones have lower proc rates than the non-random ones that's it. And if something was a hybrid, in the hereditary category, it would be one rarity. And in the non-hereditary category, it would step up 
one level of rarity. So that's what you see here. That's why random marble and random cross are uncommon, while... Oh, actually, random marble's totally in the wrong spot, because I mixed up marbled and melanism when I was reading that earlier. So random marbled might need to move, but that's... I'll deal with that when I deal with that. The, the point being that it would be where it is. Maybe I'd need to switch obsidian and marbled. Hmm. Back on track. So no, the point is there would be in a rarity, and then that rarity would define its base odds. And everything in the same type and rarity would have the same base odds. So if we look up here, albino is the common. So its numbers actually don't change, like, at all. Like, literally at all. The only thing that's going to be different for this one is that the tribute bonus is not going to be as effective. Um, Chimera, while it is deemed the rare, its base odds are actually coming down a thousand from the get-go. So we're moving it from that 3,000 down to 2,000. And then the uncommon blood marked is sitting in between them. And this is how the numbers shake out the whole way across. You'll notice that for these guys, parent doesn't affect them at all because it doesn't affect them at all. And then we see Maja comes in and we get a change uh, Maj 2 comes in we get a change faction comes in we get a change and then we get our tribute change so like the max max of maximum for an albino you can get a 2.08 percent well jill how does that stack up to currently it's about the same it's about the same i think uh i don't think that number is right i think that number is using the percentage no it's not that's the 50 right there Bam. Sorry, I'm reading formulas. So, um, as it currently stands, it's 2%. So, yeah, about the same. Um, Chimera, overall, is going to become more accessible because of the reduction of 1,000. And Bloodmark would go up just a little bit. So, that's what you would be looking at there for those guys. They're actually pretty simple, very clean. I'm not significantly worried about them. And if we take something like Albino, which is this common what is that a thousand and I jump back over to my original my individual odds and I highlight my thousand you can see every possible combination that comes across here oh man I wish that highlighted that more um can you switch it away from blue uh no I I, I can do this so like if you just have Maja one and faction um you would have ignore ignore one parent for a or two parent for the non-hereditaries, you'd have a 1.2% chance. So it's different depending on what combinations you are until it gets to the one that has all the combinations, which is that 2.08 that you saw on the other side. So this is just the mass so you can see everything broken out into every different way. It's just for the sake of this argument, I'm putting, I'm showing you the maximums. Those maximums are probably not the odds you are rolling with when you do a breeding, okay? So... If you look at it and you're like, but 2% is not very high. My dudes, you haven't had 2% the entire time you've been doing it anyway. Like, eh. Most people are not fully maxing out with a tribute for every single mutation they've been going for. Tributes only existed since December. Okay? So in general, with tribute, your numbers are going up. You just need to get your hands on that UT. And we will, eventually. All the UTs... At least the group-owned ones are pretty accessible. I'm pretty sure it went into pools this month. Yeah, I believe it went into pools this month. Which is another reason that I was like, ah, crap. Now I really have to fix this. Okay, so that's the non-hereditaries. And then the non-hereditaries um, hybrids, they, they're, they're the same. As I said, I think I've misplaced marble. I may have to shuffle these around a little bit if this is the direction we decide to go. But they are there. We should note that those ones can't be boosted by tribute. Oh, yes. Actually, I should note that. So hybrids can't be... Random side of hybrids can't be boosted by tribute. They don't show up in the list for you to boost them. Uh, so, like, you can get a marbled if you have a black parent and you roll a tawny, right? It's black and tawny breedings with tawny kids. Black and tawny breedings with tawny kids. While it's possible and it's random, the mutation doesn't show up in the list, so you actually can't tribute it. So your maximum odds are, are here. They are the max without tribute. Okay? 
That's how it currently stands. That hasn't changed for you. Okay, so that's them. Then we move on to the hereditaries. Now, the hereditaries' base odds are going to start... Some are going to be a little lower than they previously have been. Some are going to be a little higher than they previously had been. So anything in the common is starting at 500, and that'll be its base odds. You can see it across the board. Anything in the uncommon is 1,000, which is what appears to be the generic number for most mutations with the exception of reversal for whatever reason. And cross. <laughs> and cross. Like, those two were low, but the rest weren't. So, like, cross is going up a little bit, but melanism and lucism are coming down. And um, Harley, while its number isn't changing, will be more accessible with the other change that we're making in general. Um, reversal, their numbers did go up. And then either obsidian or marbled, their numbers will um, stay the same. And for iridescent uh, and obsidian or marbled, whichever one ends up in rare, as I said, I feel like I got to shuffle this again. I kind of picked these. We may want to actually sit down with Cray and do all the, um, go through the design guides because the interactions of these can have a big impact. Yeah. Like, don't look at this as the final list on rarity. We will need to go through it. This was at a speed run, and I assigned some rare some rarities this morning based on my heart, not based on data. The final list will be based on data if we go this way. Um, what you have the most freedom with sort of things. But rare, you see they stepped up a little bit, um, shaking you out to about here. So, oh, sorry, let me do the without tribute first, because most people won't have tribute right now. So these, about the same. And then these, a little harder to get. Um, but that's the numbers that we're looking at. Uh, we aren't taking base coat into consideration here. And you're like, but you did for Harley. We're not taking it into consideration because unlike Harley, you can do things that guarantee you black pups. You can do things that guarantee you tawny pups. It's not as difficult as guaranteeing Merle moves when there's already a mechanic for double Merle that screws you when you try to do those breedings, okay? there's th That doesn't exist for Tawny and Black. So while they're on there and we're acknowledging they're on there, we aren't making special considerations for it when we're doing the numbers, okay? Just to be clear. So questions? Like, I'll go look at the other one um, in a moment, but this is it based on rarity. Yes, some things will be harder to get, but we will have a more quantifiable system of what is rarer than others. Yeah, and I think I saw um, that people were commenting that Cross opens up design options, but you cannot display Mel, Lou, and Cross on the same toko. Like, if you have a Mel Cross, you have to pick one or the other. So, I think that was the restriction we were talking about when we classed Cross as common. Yeah, it was an interaction restriction. As I said, a lot of these were a little more heart than data, but because Dunn and I know so much about the game in general. Do we? Yes. <laughs> yes. We have forgotten more about tokos than some mid-level players have ever known. Mm. And then we sound like idiots because they ask this question. I'm like, I knew the answer to that two, three years ago. Give me a minute. <laughs> typing y'all are really scared me with this is it, like this is not nearly this isn't like the main powerpoint um where we had everything covered yeah that's true okay um so and then pulling us into this one over here so you should read the name. Oh, the 3M intense debate battle mode. Yeah, it was. This is mostly a done win. You should all know that this is a done win. I didn't want these numbers, but she fought for you uh, to give you this option. I was like, we'll just do it by rarity. And she's like, no, you have to give them an option. I was like, but I don't want to give them an option. She's like, no, you have to give them an option. I was like, okay, fine. And then this was like the 3AM harsh tones. For once, I was the one who was like, kill the numbers make everything harder to get it'll be more fun that way and she was like you can't you can't do that and i was like mm, 
mm, but it could. She's like, yeah, okay, let me rephrase that. You're not getting to do that. I was like, fine. So we present you with options. You make your decisions regardless of which direction we decide to go here or if both of these are an absolute miss and we need to do a third one. Okay, the other things I said, though, those are those are still happening. The Harley change, the um, Chimera change. Like, Chimera odds are coming down regardless. Things it's weird they were so high. It's really weird how high they were, especially because they they don't have good breedability. No offense. If you love your Chimeras, love them. They didn't have good breedability. Um, and but the nature of what they were, like, they were very difficult to get designed, especially in the start of the game. They were... They were a. Uh... I remember. I remember my first Kim. Soda was doing those sales, and I had a like six a.m. to two p.m. work shift, and I think that because it opened East Coast time, like I'm sitting there, I'm supposed to be starting my day, and I'm like, I've got to buy the Kim. I've got to buy the Kim. <laughs> I got it. I think you did, and it took me six years to put up because of a photo token. Yep. Yep. <clears throat> and now we're like, oh, I got like 18 pot tokens on my bank. I'm just trying to decide on which 21 pot token project I want because we're crazy people from Luna. Um, all right. So you had a moment to digest these numbers. I'll go over them. Basically, they are standardized across the board about everything. Non-hereditaries start with a thousand odds. They shake out at the exact same numbers across the board for everything. Everything is just that 2.8% chance. And any future non-hereditary is going to come in and stick in the exact same bucket. It's always going to be this number. Um, have much less enthusiasm for this. Well, I do have less enthusiasm because, yes, while everything is standard and it's the same, we could have done that with mains and we could have done that with builds and we could have done that with lots of things. But I like the variety. <laughs> on it i like to be able to quantify that this was harder than that but that's that's me that's my vibe that's why things have moved that way but there's usually a justification behind it in some way if everybody really just wants standard numbers then standard numbers it is it's just not my vibe i'm just not gonna i'm also not going to throw a fit at you because i didn't get my way that's stupid um, Fair enough. Carry on. and then we go to hereditaries now you're like, but Jill, those are 500s. Yes, friends, because I'm fixing the parent problem. And the parent problem, as you recall, cut your odds in half for breeding. So this resets the numbers to the current numbers basically as they stand. Um, which is with two parents, you have a 2% pass rate. With the tribute fix in play, your maximum that you could ever have is 8.33. From keeping in mind, you can only tribute one thing at a time. So really what you're looking at for most things is this 6.67% chance. I will point out, though, with this particular system, don't expect more mutation buffs anytime soon because this system leaves us. The current system left us nowhere to go. This system is just kind of like a fix to that system keeps all the numbers about the same yes some things are losing their their big numbers like uh reversal and cross they are they're losing some but everything's just standardized and everything is this oh, 6.67 yeah. this one rev cross is getting harder oh yes even in this one rev cross is getting harder like that that's still happening and harley is still getting the whole if you roll harley um and you don't have the the merle we'll just add it those things are still happening in the system too but basically, everything has been put back to the majority odds of the original system and has the tribute fix put upon it where the tribute is now that percentage and not that static number. And all of the numbers are match. I mean, it's a real straightforward system. If it's non-hereditary, use this number. If it's hereditary, use this number. That's how it works. Um, and because of the way that the individual odds are set up, let me go to my 500 calum. So the way that this is set up, then everything just does this. So if you only have the small bonus, then and one parent to your 1.11, two parents is 2.22. And if you have all the bonuses, you'll see, hey, those numbers look very, very familiar. Yeah, that's just how it is. Uh, where is two? There it is. There. Those are the final numbers if you have all of the bonuses. And then, oh, maybe I just have faction and uh, small bonus. Small tribute and two parents. Well, there's your number. And that's it across the board. 
and hereditaries running, or excuse me, not hereditaries, running on this column or this row instead. See? Very, very straight forward. No one was excited about it, but I'll also be okay if I get outvoted. I promise. I was teasing you. These are the two systems that we have. In the time frame that we had, this is what we could come up with to fix the problems that had to be fixed. And um, as much as we could do like a thousand down this column, where can I edit that? Yeah. A thousand down this column. Um, that does have the effect of basically having the original numbers because we're fixing how parent works. Okay. That's why they're 500, even though they're technically matching your percentage odds, your percentage odds to the original system or to the current system. Okay. Questions. Um, I will take, obviously there's a feedback channel. You can do your thoughts and concerns. Obviously, I'm going to have a legit feedback form for this, too. Like, yes. it will be there. As always, please don't rage at me. I will answer your questions. I will I will take everything you say. And even if you don't change my mind, I will always give you a chance to change my mind. And people do. They do. I, I make implementations. Maybe they don't happen that day. They happen at the next open. But people change my minds in the feedback forms all the time, with one exception. If you come in screaming at me that I have ruined your breedings forevermore, I can't have a conversation with you. I can't understand what you're upset about and go from there. Oh, dear. Somebody broke done. Tina. Hmm. But can we yell at each other about how to pronounce IPAC? I mean, if you want to, that's fine. That's cool. Just keep it out of the, the form. Just keep it out of the form. Um, but yeah, so don't come in screaming at me. But come and talk to me. I Those are there so that you can talk to me and tell me how you feel. And I can I can account for it in my thinking. Having data helps. I'm a data-driven di creature. But your feelings and your emotions do matter in these situations. Um, it's just that they don't always beat the data. I know. I'm, I'm not an evil AI, I promise. It's just like when I make changes, I like to justify them with something beyond my heart. Why did you say evil AI? It was that the was that the specific Okay, in the current day and age, even if I were just a very sophisticated AI designed to run tokos, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> okay, we got questions coming in. They might need time to process all of this. Yeah. Okay, so no questions typing right now. We're obviously going to post this in the feedback thread. That's part of our podcast cool down time making feedback threads exactly but okay so we are going to do that we're going to post it it's fine that you don't have an actual thought or question right now it's a lot to take in you can see how all of this goes um and make your decisions and i will in that feedback thread i will post the bullet list of things that are absolutely changing whether it's exactly how i said they were changing or how you have convinced me they are going to change. They're changing. That bullet list will be there as well. So you have those while you're looking at these numbers. We do have somebody typing. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And not just podcast chatter exploding because you guys are fun. <laughs> oh, everybody is arguing about how to... I, I guess IPAC has come under contention. I didn't realize that. It's just IPAC. Apparently there's IPAC or APAC. N no, there's just IPAC. Whatever, Takotne. That's how you spell it. Mm. There's no Y or I at the end of Takotna. <laughs> Give me one second, guys. Done. Entertain them. Um... All right, so who caught me changing the tab name the entire time Jill was talking? And I don't think she noticed, so good job, me. Also, very sad, she missed some beautiful things, or rather, some a beautiful things to read. <laughs> oh my god, she noticed now. <laughs> there, I gave you a real thing to refer to it by. Oh, uh, spoils from me? Absolutely not. How dare you? I have to keep jealously guard all my content and keep Jill from spoiling it. <laughs> 
yeah, that is true, Tina. Or toss out a, you know, opinion about how many commas you should have in a sentence, huh, Jill? Dunn has too many. Jill has not enough. It's like garlic. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Remember that whole crazy story I told you about my sister and Mexico and the dogs? So my reward, what was supposed to be my reward for putting up with her dogs for two days and babysitting, and I say solo parenting, but obviously Dunn was there, was tonight I was going to go back to her place and then we were going to get like a writing retreat. But she decided to come back a day early and that was her texting to let me know. So she'll be home tonight. Fuck. Look at you dropping F-bombs oh on the God. podcast. Oh, oh no. <laughs> I'll Hopefully deal. they didn't hear me. I'll deal with that after the podcast. Okay, what if we go get, like, a hotel for one night for a writing retreat? That's very frivolous, my dear. Uh, when have we not been frivolous? <laughs> Heard everything. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. No, they all heard me. Of course they did. Oh, God. Okay, so <laughs> that feedback thread is coming up. And my wonderful little story rolls into my next... Are you? Are you sure? Okay. So that wonderful little story runs into my next bullet point, which is just called 2024 is rough. Spelled R-U-F-F, of course, because done. Um, I am I'm reading my bullet point and going, oh, right. Yeah, okay. I had such grand plans for March. I had so many grand plans for 2024 in general. One of which, in March, is we were supposed to have a grand shop revamp. And that revamp would introduce some new stores, and it would also, very funly, introduce NPCs for each store. And I needed to fix how some of, like, the timing would work for, like, our um, limited purchase stuff. I hate our limited purchase stuff because GoDaddy. Um, It's GoDaddy's fault. But, like, all of that was happening and then DA announced that we had to migrate on March 25th. And Toko showed up at their group migration um, podcast. There's air quotes around that. They tried to put it at a time that most people wouldn't be able to go. But they didn't account for Tokos in general. And that we're all crazy. So I think we had like five people at it. It's definitely me and Alcestia asking questions. Yeah. And the others that showed up to their their questions like about the groups and they're trying to be like hoorah groups are awesome and we were like no they're not let us ask you intense deep technical questions about how this is going to work and the developers and that sat there like blinking like what is what how do you even know to ask that question we work with the jill yeah they work with the coder and that's the crap she asks them so yeah we they ended it real fast they were not prepared oh yes um you missed it on purpose, Lock. They scheduled it for the last 20 minutes of a work day on a Friday. The only people who made that were people like me sitting at their work desk being like, I'm ready for this. Yeah, you were supposed to miss it. <laughs> and then and then they would come back and be like, but we had a feedback form and none of you showed up and gave us feedback. No, we showed up and we gave you feedback. So if DA wants to pretend it doesn't know how annoyed we are about the group migration... Well, then they need to just get better because like if Tokos can admit its mistakes and Tokos of all stupid things can account for feedback and make changes and decide things based on our like 7,000 people, DA, the people who are paid to do this should be able to as well. You can hear my ferocity about this entire subject. I am so annoyed, especially when they just decided to throw it as I had plans for March and all of them, all of them have been delayed, including this shop rebalance, which, hold on, let me find something cool. Da, da, da. Oh, I missed the button. <laughs> so why is that not working? Ta-da! All of my plans are delayed. So enjoy a character concept sketch. Oh, it's not a concept. It's just the sketch lines for the treaty store guy. Igor. You may have heard of him before. I got some familiar faces and some unfamiliar faces coming. And we're going to have a whole store revamp, hopefully in April. But I suspect in April I'm still going to be dealing with the fallout of the group migration and the things they didn't tell us were changing. 
that we just were going to discover. Um, anniversary is probably a nice aim, place to soft aim this. <laughs> yeah, soft aiming this for anniversary. So then we have things like Igor. Um, yeah, actually, I'm reading that in chat right now. And then DA kneecapped it. Yes, that's how it feels right now. That that sentence encapsulates my feelings about this right now. <sighs> also, yeah, oh yeah, Locke is doing the characters. I'm sorry, Locke. I should have shouted that out sooner. But Locke will be doing all of the cool characters for us. Like I said, Igor and other favorites returning by de- popular demand. Um, <laughs> so. There's no name on that. Nope. I'll figure oh. it out. Well, I assume they'll figure it out. I mean, I guess you could do the raffle and make them guess. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I can make them guess in the raffle. Well, there we go. I needed a raffle question. <laughs> um, so that happened. And then on top of that, I I am trying to find words. Uh, gardening is delayed. My hopes were really high. They were really high in November that we would be debuting a gardening system in January and many things that are beyond my control have happened um I won't throw any shade about what what's happened it just it has I don't think there was a way that we could have prevented it but gardening is delayed again because gardening has moved back onto my plate. And the reason it hadn't gotten done prior to that is I don't have the capacity to do it when doing so many of the other things that I am doing. Um, but the current gardening system has moved back to me. Um, I'll get to it as soon as I can get to it. But obviously the group migration has come above it and the group migration has required some intense levels of, of coding. I'm already like 140 hours into coding stuff for the group migration at this point. So uh, I'll get to it, and the system that we baited is not the system we will be using. It's It needs some overhaul. It will maybe be like 75, 50 to 75 percent of that system, but it needs some overhaul. There were some big problems there. You need to shorten timelines. You need to increase yield. Yeah. Interactivity. You, interactivity was not where I wanted it to be for that system. Um, but, you know, there's no way that that could have been known until we saw people interacting with it, so... I mean, that at least that good came out of the beta. The grow times were just too long. The yields were too small for it, especially to maintain it while it's powering the crafting system. So obviously produce boxes aren't going anywhere, and we're introducing flying fruit bat, and other things will come around to get gardening items out. I think, are gardening items in the shrines yet? Yes. Gardening items are also in the shrines. So we're making them available in places... Um, And there will be another beta for gardening. I don't know when. I will tell you as soon as I I do know. I've only just... I say decipher not because it's like badly written or anything. But um, when two different coders are on something, it can be like two different languages. So I have to translate how their thought process works to something I understand that will match closer to my thought process to understand the code that's there. So it is like a literal translation project, and I'm only like 50% through the gardening code. So it's not because it's bad. It's not it's not working. It's purely just that's how coding is, unless you're running a company with strict coding standards like many do to prevent exactly that. That's not Toko's. We've got many different thought processes and patterns going on in the back to facilitate the coders that are working on it and the ones with certain skills are in different places. So I'm wading into something that's very UI heavy, not usually my skill set. You all know this. I can't mobilize anything to save our lives and um, very reactive heavy. So I'll need to, to do that. So I'm halfway through my translating of it and then I'll get it onto my, my uh, what's the word I'm looking for? My roadmap for the year. It's happening. Regardless, it's happening. You're gardenless? Uh, okay. So that's my 2024 is rough. Now. Um, oh, yeah. Hold on. I got one more, you guys. New faces. New faces. I don't know what their name is yet. I say they because I don't know if I've decided if, if it's he, they, she, or what yet. 
Maybe Locke will decide for us. Locke. Love you, Locke. Yeah, love you, Locke. She, she may, um, but, you know, we'll, we'll do this. <laughs> we got mixed caps. It is a mystery. It is a mystery. <laughs> a Tonga Tech mystery. <laughs> okay. So, um, with that, I move on to... Man, I think I need to make Tonga Tech t-shirts for the shop. Oh, hey, there's a nice little bright spot. Oh, that's right. We recently got some coffee logos at an appropriate size, so some Toco coffee merch will be coming. Dire Dunks. Dire Starbucks. Dunks. Starbucks. Yep, those are the ones. Get your Starbucks shirt today before <laughs> Starbucks uh, hits us with a cease and desist. I'm pretty sure we're well within the realm of parody. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's talk about the Akota in the room, the DA group migration. Woo. Yeah, yeah, DA, you suck. Okay. Woo. They've got me on recording finally. We tried the entire time. Sorry. The entire time with Eclipse. We tried to be positive and upbeat for all of you. Like, all of your sake that Tokos isn't going away. We're going to adapt and work with this. And we have. But I'm so tired of them breaking shit on us. Constantly. Constantly breaking things on oh, us. Oh, that was cursing again. Damn it. No, oh, whatever. It's PG-13, not PG general, okay? <laughs> 13-year-old can hear you say the word shit. <laughs> that being said, yeah, you know that Tokos has been at the forefront of keeping up on DA changes since Eclipse dropped on us during that whirlwind trauma post of a year, 2020. Um, so we've been in charge. We've been in front of it. We have been um, accounting for it. We were constantly like, okay, this has changed to handle Eclipse. This has changed. Someone brought this up. Okay, here you go. We moved stuff onto the site. We were not, we are not, as I say this with all honesty we are not leaving da um because i know a lot of people were freaking out and i think was it was it strix strix moved yeah strix moved but i don't think they're on paper demon anymore um you know someone can correct me if i'm wrong but like we've seen we saw arpg shut down we saw some of them go off to other sites we've seen some of them try to come back we have seen it all and tokos withstood this group migration has truly annoyed me. Like, I tell people not to be mad about Eclipse. I tell people to do this. Like, we'll adapt. Changes like this are, are difficult. They just haven't done a good job of getting champions for it. Um, and they're not listening to feedback to find compromises. But, like, all in all, I understand what these people are going through. I'm also a developer. Like, this much hate is so hard to do your job with that I don't want to contribute to it. But this group migration has truly pissed me off because of some of the changes that they've made. What do you mean there's no button to get to notes and you don't feel like rectifying that before the go live? I know what an enterprise release process looks like. I deal with it constantly. Unless they somehow have more intense security than a bank, which I'm real doubtful for on DeviantArt. Adding a link to the button's not that hard. So, I have a lot of feelings. I have a lot of emotions about it. This really upsets me. And we have to account for it, though. Regardless of how I feel about it, we're still going to play Tokos. We're going to deal with all the things that have been happening, and we are just going to make it work. So, first thing, they killed our homepages. It's the second time they've done it to us. Yeah, we used to have a beautiful, glorious custom CSS journal that we updated and we had to go in and change, and it was beautiful. We all loved it. It was so good, the other ARPGs copied us constantly. And um, that goes props to tons of different people who did that, made the sidebar, did all the things. It was what it was. Then they killed our journals. And we had to find a way to persevere, and we did. We actually found a very pretty current homepage that we are working with that we all love and we like with all of our colors and pieces all over the place and we love it and we're losing it so Dunn has worked her magic for us again 
Dun, dun, dun. And we have four new home pages. Um, these will be going into effect after the migration, but we have spots that you can go and look at them. So Phases of the Moon Ranch is our new Toko's homepage. As you can see, we've kept our sidebar art. We figured out a way to do it. Um, we've, we've kept this box and we've got our text, our newbie guide, our returning players guide. We have our uh, cycling navigation over here on the side with all these buttons. And you see right here where it says need help, send us a howl. Rather than using the difficult to find group notes, we're going to be moving more about that later. Um, some, if you've been in chat, you have an idea what I'm talking about. But all of it will be basically we'll be sending everything to a howl instead. And this will be accessible everywhere, including on Takotne. We're going to go ahead and do the featured art. We're going to, since we've got it, we're going to use it. And we have Tokonet, which gets you to our Discord. And our merch shop shows you all of our different official groups. And we do have a few of them. And our official accounts that you need to account for. Pun half intended. And then because we have the space, we've gone ahead and found like the, the old lo-fis of IPAC. And we'll post it up there along with things to our Twitch and our YouTube so that you can find all of our cool little things. This is what our new homepage is going to look like. It's really good. I'm willing to put that unnamed ARPGs will have copied it within a month. It's really good. They're just going to copy us again because I think we cracked it. That being said, we have three other groups that you need to account for. So, Fablewood Estates is our temporary toko center. You will see it looks very similar. There's a very consistent feeling to it between, as you move between groups. But this one is Nagi themed with different sidebar art and different backgrounds. We will probably change out the text in here to be more specific to each of the, the groups you're looking at. And obviously some of the buttons will be different. In this one we have the activity guide and the visual guide. Why are those? Are those linked? Oh, maybe the links broke when I redid the buttons. It's very possible. Okay. I oh. redid the buttons with Cray's really clean to read. Oh, yeah. Style, and Beautiful. I, think I may have broken some of the links. No worries. We'll get those fixed before because we have to redo all this work when we move it over anyway. Um, and then you see Howl system here as well. We'll have taking advantage of the features, treaties over here. I think we've got a, a lo fi for Aga. Um, and then the merch shop and everything is colored up the way that we like it. So this is what our activity, your Toko Center, is going to look like. It will be Nagi themed, while our main group will be IPAC. Events of Takone is going to Sivo. It kind of just felt right. Um, so it's going to be going to this green vibe um, where we have our spooky cities. And we have, uh, let me see, event news, event guides, FAQs. You might want to show them the region, like Narnvox thing because we had to cut down on links on the front page oh yeah we did have to cut down on links on the that one narvox got one yes all right so then this will take you to narvox and you'll be able to do all the things here we had to cut down on the links just because of how it works so the regions became their own they take you to a main hub and then all of these have like the adventure the brawl the dd the canon all of those previous things that you can get back to and obviously as you know when World Tour ends in like 2030, um, we'll <laughs> we'll have new events come through. Okay, um, same thing here. Send us a howl if you need help. We'll be taking advantage of that. Um, I think this has got IPAX one on there. As people make more, that is a playlist. Oh, this is a playlist. You see the one out of 15. Oh, I do. I do now. So I went hunting for things on YouTube, added it to a playlist. If you guys have more, drop them at me, and I'll add them. Yep. And then everything on here is all themed up, and we have different sidebar art. Well, that's still the TC. Oh, that's the TCA one, but we'll have different sidebar art is the goal. And then finally, that's not what I want. Finally, we will be, because of the next point I'll be making about group folders, <laughs> we need a fourth group. <laughs> They're all fixated on your notifications. What notifications? Your 1,000 notifications. Oh, whatever. Get over it. <laughs> They're my notifications. I cleared them out, like, a month ago. No, your notifications clear when they hit that year point that DA just deletes them. Oh, yeah. Yeah, mine get, my notifications get cleared out when DA deletes them. Finally, we have Toko Tourneys. Yes, this is the actual name of it. Thank you, Kev. 
Yep. And this one is going to be Borga themed because Borga is basically our patron saint of deities or of uh, competitions. So he's got these cool glass buttons. He's got this purpley blue theme going on. We have all of the PvP stuff, TBT, Brawl, CE, um, bonuses guide. We'll be doing our featured art, Tokonet in its different format, and then the playlist and the Toko treaties and everything down here. So our goal is that all these home pages will look consistent but different so you are you know which group that you're in. Um, and if you're going to do CEs, yes, you need to join Toko tourneys. When the, when the groups flip, we're going to have a whole folder situation, and you're going to need to start putting things in Toko tourneys. We'll open those folders when it happens. Uh, but those are our four new home pages. I'll let that one sit up there as I flip back to my agenda. So that's our four new home pages. Um, I personally think they look pretty damn good. I'm happy with how not bad they look in comparison to what could have happened to us. I think we we figured it out. They were a lot of work, though. Dunn has been up to like 5 a.m. multiple nights making sure that these work for us and that we can get it and making them consistent um, and going from there. So that's that's where we're at right now. Obviously... If we need a fifth group for some reason, we have more deities. We have three more deities to pick from and go for go from there. Um, for the sidebar art, the form is up in yeah. Daily Bark. I think it's in Daily Bark. If you go to the Daily Bark, one of the last things in there should be a place for you to submit sidebar art. You can only submit your art, but if you have some cool art you'd like to see on the sidebar, hit us with it. I don't know how often we're going to change it out, but we will change it out. I would like to get new for everything, but we definitely need new for events and toko tourneys. Okay, so. Those two are prioritized, and then we'll do a refresh on the other two if we can. And obviously by allowing us to do it, you are allowing us to make the minor modifications we need to make so that it will scroll from one piece to another and have all of that. Um, and no, obviously we, we don't have like a spot where we're crediting all of our sidebar art because there is so much of it going on. We have it. Currently, but there is no small box we can do. I can play with a credits box, but yeah, we, we'll play with it, but no promises There's about none it. None of those nice, neat little ones that we have currently on the sidebars. Yeah, we don't have any. Th we don't have sidebars. If you haven't figured that out, that's a background image. We're faking it with a background image. There aren't any sidebars for us to put things in. This was their official on that podcast suggestion that we do. Yeah. When we asked them about it, they were like, well, why don't you just make it the background? And also, the boxes, we can't control the size of them in any capacity. Like, really, we can't. So, on my screen, they're dipping over the sidebars. But on other people's screen, they're not. Like, it's, it's is what it is. We can't control it. Um, so, homepages. Questions? Oh, I guess you should go into the Toko Tourney thingy. Oh, I know you did. I'm, I'm, we're staring at Toko Tourneys. Okay. You said everybody had to join it. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Oh. Okay. So, yeah. The folders are all in place there, but they don't show until anything is in them in a very annoying manner. Oh, that is a super annoying manner. Okay. Another strike against you, DA. Okay. So, um, is anyone typing? Sorry, there was something down in DA group changes. I will go handle that after. Uh, yes, they are typing. Okay. Can we join these right now? or do they... So you can join Toko attorneys now. The other three are just placeholder groups. Those will transition to the existing groups when it goes live. Exactly. Phases of the Moon is just the holder account that we're using so that we don't have to migrate our main group until we're ready for it. Oh, I hear. I hear. I'm going to turn my screen because mm -hmm. I hear... I, th I think I have a Thomas trying to break in. I say break in. I close the door. He's three. He hasn't figured out handles. Um, so, yes, um, Phases of the Moon is just a holder account. That will be our official one. We just don't want to convert them until we have to. Um, Fablewood Estates will be Toko Center. And the third one that's name is escaping me right now, that's going to be events. And Toko Tourneys is Toko Tourneys. Oh. Okay. Mute for a minute. You're just done with the iPad, buddy? 
Okay. You want to go play with your magnets then? Yes, honey? I can as soon as I'm done with my podcast, okay? I love you. Just, uh, can you go make sure he's, he's in his room and he's okay? Somebody woke up a little early. And uh, Toko Turnies is new and we created it, so go ahead and join Toko Turnies now if you want to. Okay? Sorry about that minor interruption, but um, I, I won't run through this, but y'all know that I need to go deal with my kid when we're done here. <laughs> that still sounds wrong. I say things like that, but I do want to go play magnets with him. Um, okay, so that's there, and then let me see. There was questions, questions, questions. Uh, no, apparently that was the only question. Cool. All right, so that's our homepages and the new group. Um, new folder structure. Do you want to take that question? Those uh, there that explanation done? Well, apparently I skipped a question to subtract quota or not. Never. <laughs> I did her quota. That's how bad it was. Um, folder, folder, folder things. Folder things. I think the link to this has been dropped in the Discord channel for you all to take a look at, but more or less, we have folders and subfolders and we're losing everything below it. So at this time, Toko Center, Events of Tokotna, and Toko Attorneys have all been updated as of last night, where everything has been removed and consolidated into these new levels. Toko Center, I made a small change where I left the current completed folder in the main folder for them all. You'll see some underbars on things like completed hunts one through six, uh, and that's just to force some sorting in the DA background so they all sort to the bottom because we never really need to change permissions on them. I'm talking really fast, aren't I? You're doing fine. Keep going. Okay. Um, so all of these, so from Toko Center, Events to Coat and Toko Attorneys, those have all gone live and everything's moved over. Today, my goal is to go into Dakota's, the main group, and start re-sorting everything into the new folder structure. So you're going to see a lot of things jumping around as I get rid of our sub-subfolders and sub-sub-subfolders. And then we're going to do some changing. Obviously, CEs and PVP and all that is going to its own group. So leaving the main group focused on things like write art, AOAs, bonding, quests. Um... Advertisements. Advertisements. Also splits your global daily limit up across the three groups, just in case, because I know that was a problem for some people. Um, but um, but um, but um. Across all four groups, we're going to start utilizing the featured folder more. So all admins have been instructed to, as they're processing things, if they see something that makes them go, ooh, that looks neat, to just copy it to the featured folder, and then that's where I'm going to pull the featured art every month for the token the Dakota homepage, because that gets updated every month. Um, go ahead. We will be respecting your, I don't want my art to go anywhere. If you have um, it turned on where like your art doesn't show if someone's logged out or incognito or such, like we, we're going to check that on those featured things before we move it. And if yours is not going to be there, we won't reach out to you. We just respect it. No problem. We won't move it and all is good. Yep, exactly. I go incognito when I'm pulling all these, so anything that doesn't show incognito doesn't get pulled for Dakota. And it's still using DA's um, O-embed system, so we are not we don't have a physical copy of your art on Dakota. Exactly. It's just working like the imports where t uh, DA does all of the work of holding that image, and we just grab it through their official API system and display it. All right. Can you scroll down a bit so I can see rights of dominance? All right, so currently how all of these folders work is there was a rights of dominance folder, or I guess there's a rights form folder and then rights of dominance, one, two, three. And as they fill up, we just make a new one and it's the higher number. We're going to change this around a little. So rights of dominance, the top level folder will be open for submissions. And then every quarter we will clear that out and put that in a subfolder to keep the top level constantly cycling recent art from everybody. So it always looks a little different than just seeing the same images over and over again. And that'll be how we're going to run it for bonding, CODA, RODs, uh, AOAs, kind of down the board. Um, am I missing anything or did I hit everything? I feel like I'm talking really fast. 
Oh God, this is like my meeting voice. It is your meeting voice. I've heard this meeting voice before. And no, I don't think you missed anything. But of course, questions. Why am I being constantly this way? What just happened? It's fine. Okay, um, while people type those questions, I have some... I feel like it's medium news. It's not straight good news. It's not really bad news. It's more like medium news. Because there's good and there's bad aspects to it. Because of what they did to Stash recently, Stash trackers are dead. Now, they've been dead for a while, but now we mean... Sorry, carry on. (laughs) They have been dead for a while, but now they're like dead dead. So if you're like... Hi, I haven't been in Tokos in like seven years. I've just come back. I have all of these roles in my stash tracker. Okay, well, stash trackers are dead. We can't comment on them or do anything with them. All the images are broken. Every image is broken. So we can't see what was in your stash tracker. Because remember, they used to be images. You have to literally like go into the inspect and go and find them. We're not doing that for your 600 roles that you did not submit. I'm so sorry. We're just not doing it. We cannot get you those rolls back. Stash trackers, as of right now, are dead. Not like, April 1st, they're dead. Get them in before then. Like, they're already dead, guys. That happened. This is our reaction to that happening. However, I said it was medium news. It's medium news because we will still accept it as a POTA success as long as it meets the other criteria of, like, the Toko's name or ID is there somewhere that we can link it to this Toko. So we don't have to comment on those. So as long as we can link it to the TOCO, we will still totally take them as POTA successes. That is fine. The, the text says it was successful. That's all we care about. What you actually got doesn't matter. Additionally, we kind of came up with an idea. So we can't give you the items that are gone because we're not going through inspect on 600 comments and you're not going through inspect on 600 comments. Um, but what we can do is we can... Um, Gosh darn it. What we can do is we can have your count your rolls. And if you have like 200 rolls, we'll just give you 200 openables. Simple as that. Like you can put it in. Redeemed rolls. Unredeemed rolls, obviously. So you go in, you, you put it into our thread. We add it to a list somewhere that says we have handled this tracker up on our, our Discord. And then in that we'll count how many successes you have that are unredeemed and we'll just dump that many openables of that appropriate activity into your bank and call it good that's what we can do and that's all we can do for you and we will but as i said medium news if you if you're like but i had like 17 hearts in this journal i'm sorry that really sucks but i can't do anything for you i can give you you know x number of roll openables and at least get you some of your items it's like getting a whole new role. Well, kind of. Technically, it has all the new items that have been added to the pool over the years instead of just. Exactly. It's got all the new items. So that's kind of like the medium news on that. DA has handed us this. We're dealing with it as we do. And then this is what we're going to do for you. Okay? So stash trackers are dead. But that doesn't mean you are dead in the water. All right. Do we get any questions? Ooh, okay. Okay. What else is left on my... Oh my gosh, there's so many things. Whew. <clears throat> Sorry, all That was a little loud. Okay. Now for that demo. So, you heard... We're just getting to that. Holy shit. So you heard about... You've probably seen something about this, and you saw the words howl going on everywhere. So with group notes becoming what they are, and we don't know when they're going to add a link to it, and we just don't... There's issues where when a player sends us a note, you, when you send us a note, we can see it in an admin side inbox, but you guys cannot. It's just going to be utilizing your normal notes box, which means finding records of your notes and stuff like that. It's, it's not functional anymore. It's not. And I think all of the old ones are basically gone. So oh, no, did I swear again? I didn't hear you, but maybe. Craig said I did. <laughs> Jeez, they have a swear counter for you. It's usually me who has the swear jar. Um, so, yeah, uh, they they aren't going to be functional. Your old stuff is effectively gone. Like, we have a copy of it, but, I mean, have you ever searched DA notes? Because I have. It's pretty terrible. Uh, so that's happening, whether we like it or not. 
And in the way that I work, um, when I get annoyed about things, sometimes I get spiteful about things. And when I get spiteful about things, I can get motivated because I am a human and as positive and upbeat and pretty happy and chill as I am, I am flawed too. And spite is one of them. So I built us a new system. And I think it's better. I'm in, it's in progress, but I do have a demo for you to see. Let me pop on over there. That is this one. This one. Okay. So y'all, I know you can see the URL and you can open this and you can do things. Don't. I'm going, these, this is not officially live at all. I'm going to be blowing out these tables all over the place. I'll be destroying them and rebuilding them because this isn't totally ready. It's only ready for the sake of a demo right now. So don't go play in here because I will be breaking it and you don't know what you could do to your account if the pages start breaking while I'm coding on them. Do you want to delete your faction rank? Do you want to delete your faction? <laughs> do you want to lose your secondary username? No, you don't. Leave the page alone. Don't make me go and put lockdown mechanisms in here that I'll just have to rip out when all is said and done, miss a line, and then the moment that it goes live, I have to immediately go in and fix it. Don't do that to me. <laughs> so, <clears throat> welcome to your Howl inbox. Howl is help over written letters. Yeah, that's right. We did that. Howl. So send us a howl. This is, I thought I blew those out. Hold on. Refresh the page, Jill. Because you probably blew those out. Uh, yeah, yeah, I did. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I blew out the database right before we did this. So the way that howls are going to work is you will create a new howl for us. It's pretty straightforward. We're going to come in here and I'm going to say, hey, or I'm going to say, not transfer, let's do crafting. Having an issue with crafting. And then the code. Okay, so you set a subject. Pretty simple, pretty ex exactly what you would expect. You set, you put a message in, you can do links in your messages. You can't do bolding, HTML, the just links, plain text and links is what we get. And I do say plain text, but like it will withhold, it will hold on to things like new lines. So anything that you want in there, and then you set a department. We have a pretty big list of departments for you to deal with. Um, account management through uploading. We have added one for PSD, PNG requests, and this is so that we can filter things down as well as you can filter things down. We're both going to get the benefit of this. We added a scams if you're trying to reach out to us because you think you've been scammed. We added a category specifically for that, and we are thinking of adding a second one called like player interactions where it's not a scam, but I need to talk to you about a player interaction that's going on right now. Something of that nature. And we additionally added one called group leadership. So... You know how we tell you, hey, if you have something that's super sensitive, you're not sure if you can share it to the whole group, go note I IPAC. But then you kind of have to like low key inform everybody that you noted IPAC because we don't check it every week. We check it like once a month. So it can be a bit before we see them. No more. We have a category called group leadership. I can't see the pop -up. You can't see the pop up? Okay, hold on. We have a category called group leadership. Apologies. I thought you could see the pop up. That That entire thing was much better with a pop up. Um, so let me, let me show those off again real quick. So as I said, we have PSD, PNG request. Um, we've added scams. Um, so you just want me to actually go into mine and take a screenshot? Yeah, take a screenshot okay. so they can see everything that's in there. And then what I was talking about was group leadership. The way that these ones work is only me, Cray, and Dath can see them. They'll follow the exact same system. Only we'll have access to them. They're going to be written in code that makes it so that only the three of us can see them. And then we can get to them a little bit faster because we'll be going into these notes more often. This also means that normally you would send something 
They're like, hey, if it's activity, send it to Toco Center. Hey, if it's um, design related, send it to Design Den. Hey, if it's X related, send it there because we needed them like separated to some degree so you could get specialized care. No more. You set the category and then everyone just has to go to one place to check for notes. And if someone's coming in from the bank to do bank things, they can filter to bank and not have to worry about all the other ones that are going on. So that's what that is for. Um, I'm going to set this one to crafting. But you basically you tell us a subject, which is a summary of why you need our assistance. Uh, don't make it too long. A message up to 2,000 characters. If you can't explain the problem in 2,000 characters, there's a problem. Like a different problem going on. Um, and then set a department. And then this button's probably going to say something cuter in the end. But for the moment, it just says create. Bam. Then it takes me back to my Howl inbox. And in my Howl inbox, I have, um, you know, here's my, my list. And it'll go down to the side. As you can see, I can filter it. This is going to say new in the end. But uh, the, my new ones, which means it hasn't been assigned to anybody. Nobody's working on it. My in progress and my closed. I can do to and from. I can search the subject. I can filter by departments as well. And I can go up to, I think I did 50. You can do 50 on a page. But for the most part, most of us are only going to need the 10. And then so you can filter through your howls. And when you click on it, it'll become the active howl on this side. So let me pop over to just like my inbox. You can see there's no howl selected. This one is not selected. I click on it and then bam. It becomes this. My subject, my status, my department. Right now, this is unassigned, and this is when it was created. And you can see the message that I sent with a working link. So, yay. You know, I should probably do those so that they open in new tabs. Can you make a note of that, that I should update so that with logic? I know that. I noticed that. I think I know how to preserve them, but I'll deal with it when I get there. Putting it in now. Okay. And apostrophes. The monsters that they are should function in this. All right, so here you can see I have, I've sent a message. And then up here at the top, there's a little box for me to type in. Same thing, 2,000 characters, and then send message. Now, done. have you done the thing? I have not done the thing yet. Can you go do the thing? It's 119, right? One, you don't need to do the ID. You just need to do the note ID. So, the admin side of this I isn't... An, I got an error. One second. I think it's just not going to be... Go, go... Oh, it might be the timing. Go check the browse tick category first. So, um, the way that this is going to work... Apologies. Demos! So, this is what it is. And then I can send more messages. So, I can be like, hey, I figured out that it only happens with starter slots for some reason. Okay, so I can write like another message and then I can send it. Um, I'm letting Dunn do something in the background so you can see it. It'll be super cool. This is not a live polling system. This is not a chat system. This is some hybrid between a note and a chat system. So this is not real timing, okay? And the reason that it's not real timing anything is because... Okay, the reason it's not real timing is because you know how DA chat sucks? Because there's memory leaks and a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah, we're not doing that to our site. So this is this. is this. So I have like, okay, let me type this and let me send it. Are you sure you're ready to send? Yeah, I'm ready to send. Hey, new messages. Please send your message again. Oop, and then when I click OK, Dunn's message. Because the admin replied to me in the background since between I opened this page and I went to send the message. Say, in order to receive payment, please transfer. Nope. That is a scam. <laughs> if an admin tells you that, that is a scam. I'll report that. There will be a report. Well, I don't know if there's going to be a report button on these. I don't know. We can all see all notes. We can all see all notes, except for group leadership ones, but yeah. So, and then, as you can see, my message persisted. I didn't lose it just because that happened. I hit send again. I go, yeah. Also, note, you cannot edit once sent. Is that spelled correctly? <sighs> Crap. Did I do this? Can you go in and uh, switch message read to one? Demo gremlins. I threatened them before. That's okay. Try it again. Yeah, it's because you threatened them. There we go. 
and then mine will appear there as well. And the same thing will happen. So if you leave the page open, it's not a big deal, but also it'll persist on like the reload. See, Dunn didn't actually send me two messages. It just thought that there was still a message waiting in the background. Obviously, it's in progress. I'm working on it. Um, the latest message is the one here at the top. There's still some work going around about um, styling and updating like this. This is like the last time this was updated. That's the, the, the number I want to be there. So there's just some work of like marking things red and doing that that's still got to happen. And then the active styling of what's going on. In the background of this, admins are going to have a very similar page where they can create new howls and send them to you. So we'll be using them going forward instead for of having to totem everything. Instead of toteming things, we're going to go ahead and use it here to reach out to you to tell you things. We might still use totem for things we need to use totem for, but Bans. scams, bands, bans, things of that nature. But we can reach out to you about other inquiries over here as well. We'll be able to create our own and send it to you. Um, and everything is basically if it's being worked on it's in progress if it's a if it's not been opened and nobody's doing anything with it it's new if someone's assigned to it it's in progress and it's closed when we think we're done with it yeah i need to put the admin to yeah hold on i'm updating it for you no oh. go ahead and update it and so um the the process of moving everything around and those automations i'm still working on that but basically when this go when this would be assigned to done this would move to in progress as well and this is the howl system you'll get responses here we phase one will have no attachments or images you can drop us links so put things in stash and link it to us as you currently do um we'll try to have some level of notifications where like if you get a response to a howl you'll get a notification right here that something is oh cool i got some tokens uploaded um you'll get a thing there and then admins who are assigned to things will get responses when you respond to their things as well we're hoping that this will actually reduce our lost notes status we'll hope that it'll re reduce issues like when you respond to your own note so it looks like someone responded to it from our side and we ignore it and that's just the reality of what happens like if you send us a note and then you respond to that note in an hour by the time an admin gets to it, there's a response on there. There's 50 other notes. We don't see it. Sometimes notes get forgotten because we get so many in and they just come back and they're across the board. Everybody's not logged into Design Den every day. So the wait in Design Den tends to be longer. I'm not saying this will significantly shorten waits, but it should stop more abandoned notes for us. And if I get it right, which I'm going to get it right, it'll also be mobile friendly unlike DA's BS, where you get one letter per line of a like 6,000 character note that nobody can read on mobile. <sighs> you have such feelings. I have such feelings. I hate DA mobile notes. But yeah, so this is the new Howl system. I am working heads down on this to get it up and functional um, for the 25th, if I can, a April at the, the latest. And we'll just work within what we've got until then. Um, but this is our, our system, um, you know, bugs and all, that we're going to be replacing group notes with. So, yes, we are taking one more step over into the land of Tacone and off of DA. We're not leaving DA. It's just I know that most of our game happens on Tacone at this point. Okay. It's only a matter of time before I get you to make, make journals happen. It is only a matter of time. Okay, so questions about group migration and howls. Is that all our migration notes? I think that was the last thing on my migration notes. Okay, this is good. Um, okay. okay. User breaking gremlin thinker mode engage. Will replies be shut off after a note is marked complete, or will it reset status to in progress? Um, I am kind of running those scenarios i've contemplated adding like a reopened status that kind of works as in progress but i also kind of don't want to do that because okay so an admin sends you your final thing and then not marks it complete and you respond with thank you do you really want it reopened or the situation where 
admin A handled this entire situation and it's reopened a month later, but they're no longer an admin. It's not assigned to them. They're not an admin. It's not assigned to them. They're not an admin. So I'm back and forth on it. I think what will happen is uh, there'll be some sort of time box after it's been completed, uh, maybe like 48, 72 hours. And if you respond to it in that time frame, um, uh, you'll have the ability to respond to it in that time frame, and we'll deal with it from there. I don't know if it'll automatically switch back, but we'll get a notification on the other side there was a response. And then from there, it's like the 72-hour mark, you will no longer be able to respond if it remains in the closed status. Like, I'm, there's pros and cons to both of this, and in the world of business, like, what you're talking about is its own little pain point that every single call center deals with. Um, how do we reopen? Do you not reopen? What do you do? Because I don't really want to reopen this crap for you to say thank you. But I also don't want to tell you you're not allowed to say thank you. You see? So I'm, I'm working on it. There might be like a checkbox of like, oh, okay, so thanks, send. And then if it's in the closed status, you have like 72 hours to check the checkbox to reopen it and kick it back to us. Granted, if y'all abuse that to continue complaining about something, my dude, bad etiquette. You'll just in implement a freeze. I will, yeah, I'll, I'll intervene on things like that. But those are, those are edge cases, and that's not what happens for the majority of things. People don't try and force a confrontation, so I'm not, I'm not going to plan it like that's the norm. I'll just handle those when they crop up. Okay, so I'm working on it. That checkbox idea is probably the best I've had so far, though. It makes sense to me. Yeah, it makes sense to me. There, there is tippy typing going. Okay, okay. Oh, um... Because things. Uh, Raffle, who did you think that NPC was? You have basically until I'm done answering these questions. Go. I'll, I'll, I'll put the NPC back on the page. Mm -hmm. Answer in podcast raffles. Podcast raffles. When did I? Uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm sure I am a dragon. Locke is our first answer. Yeah. Well, of course Locke is. Locke has the foggiest idea. idea. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you have until I'm done answering these questions. What I got? Are they still typing? There was typing. I think you distracted everyone with a raffle, though. I mean, you that's... You did do that to yourself. I did do that to myself. I 100% did that to myself. <laughs> I'm going to take a drink of this and give them a moment. I still personally think that it should be Howl and Roar because Kept's other background name was great. Her other background name was great, but I'm not doing it. I'm not rebranding it on the other side. I might. Yeah. Return of admin response. See, it sounds epic when you say it. It, it is epic. If we heard it first, I would have had a, a conversation with you about Howls versus Roars, but like, <laughs> it, it, they're Howls. Help over written letters. Yeah, that's right. We justified it. I don't even remember what the initial system was. Like... I was just going to call it the support inbox. And then Dunn's like, but it has to be branded. And I was like, but does this have to be? And she's like, yes, of course it has to be branded. I'm like, yeah, but what are we going to brand it with? Should I call them Howls? I'm like, well, that's stupid. We're not dogs. And then she comes back with this backronym. And I was like, well, okay, then. I, I actually can't argue with that. That's a really good backronym. <laughs> And she and I are suckers for a backronym. It's true. Multi-operational organized network of supernaturals. We are a sucker for a backronym. We needed help with that one, though. That was, whew. Yeah, that was like 10 people coming up with that. There are still people typing, but we have an unofficial question from Chatter of how are you two so, so cool and making amazing corrections and systems? Um. Uh, because we're determined keep our toko fun damn it yeah this this is my fun I, in, in, in weirdness i build these systems that we deal with like um what's the analogy that i always use when they initially tried to build a toko system they kind of got like a brain surgeon to do a heart surgery and i was like what are you doing and they were like well you know every developer is the same I'm like no they're like doctors you pick the correct one for the correct job they're like really i was like yes really if if it's about looking super pretty, a front-end developer is a great idea, but 
what's your goal for how that back end works to make your life easier so you're not doing what other unnamed ARPG does where they just duplicate all their work. Um, and they were like, oh. I was like, yeah, you got to pick the right one for the right. And they're like, what is their own? Like, oh, you want a web developer or a full end stack developer? A back end with a decent front end ability will get you over the line. Like I have really functional systems, but it won't look great. And then they were like, would you do it? I was like, guys, I'm like a foot surgeon doing heart surgery. It's not going to be pretty. <laughs> and like, but would you? And I was like, yeah, I'm really spiteful about something right now. I'll do it. Um, so, you know, the original Takotne was not pretty, but it was functional, pretty functional. Uh, because I took what I do in my real job, which is make business systems for business people to cut time out of their jobs and just like reduce the number of clicks to do everything. That's what I do for a living. And now I do it for fun, too. For you. I currently run all the technologies in a call center that deals with basically notes, player notes, and how to deal with the retention and the the timings and all that. That's what I do for a living currently. And so you all get to benefit. And before that, I did systems that look suspiciously like our banks and our stores and other things of that nature too. <laughs> and Dunn's just determined to make it all function whether it likes it or not. Mm -hmm. There's still tippy typing going. Oh my gosh, okay. I'm Whew. expecting some doozies of questions. Yeah, I'm expecting some too. <laughs> expecting some paragraphs. Three, what is CSS? That's not funny. But also <laughs> cascading style sheets. <laughs> I hate CSS. <sighs> I'm so bad with CSS, guys. I'm so bad with it. And... The fact that things even look semi-functional is amazing to me. Oh, hey, here's a question. Okay. You know what? This should have occurred to me. I okay. didn't until this moment. Is there a visible number slash ID on the HAL so that we could refer back to it if necessary? We should probably add our usual copy-paste links at the top because it will just pre-fill the URL for us, right? It would. It would. Okay. No, there's not, but there will be. You're right. There needs to be a reference number of some variety in here. I'll do add that to the list. Yep. Add that to my list. I'll make sure there's a reference number so that you can be like, hey, I'm referencing Howl number 17. I'm referencing Howl number 2439, you know. Okay. So, yeah, we'll add a reference number. You're correct. That would be very helpful. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Obviously, if I wasn't clear about it, a howl is a um, user-specific screen, much like your manage profile. So if you try and send someone a link to a like a howl, like your inbox to somebody else, it's not going to work. Even if you send it to me, it's not going to work. I have to go through a different screen to access them to prevent any sort of oops um, of that information. You know, we don't really share notes without a reason anyway, so... So, got a question cycling back to mutations real quick. Oh, okay. Uh, will Iwa draw from hereditary only if the pair can also pop the random version? Because I think that's specifically for, like, cross. You're not going to get two shots at cross. You're just going to get the cross shots. And the way that Iwa works is, with the exception of, like, Chimera, it's an even shot at everything. Mm -hmm. Is it an even shot at everything? Because you mean Bloodmark? Because Bloodmark's only there at Tom. I'm overthinking this. You're overthinking this. If they've got something in the breeding that presents them a like a cross chance, they're not going to get the random cross chance and the non-random cross chance as yes. separate things. Yes, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, they're just going to get a cross chance. Yeah. All right. Kind of curious if there's a potential need or interest for customer service for Howls or if that's expected to be all be... Oh, sorry. Or if it's expected to all be got gotted by current team members. Currently... I'm not running a CST. I'm, I'm, I'm not running <laughs> CSRs. No. Okay? Absolutely not. We are not having a CSR team. There will not be metrics. It's not happening. Are, are you having some flashbacks to your work week right now? Yes. Me and the CSRs are not friends this week, okay? But we also weren't friends last week. And the week before that, they loved me. But the week before that, they were cursing my name. So, like, 
no, we are not going to run a CSR team for tocos. Departments handle their things. We have a setup where someone would go through on a Friday, go through notes and ping departments. We'll have something equivalent to that, but no, we won't have message router in that respect. We, we're we not going to have someone whose dedicated job it is to pass notes to departments. It's been brought up before and there wasn't enough work to justify it. Our note load has gotten higher and higher. We are not having the user drop off. I don't know. <laughs> this, this might have to be a thing we monitor over the next couple months. Okay, but I know, I know I'm I not making make, a... make a CSR team. At most, I'm going to make you make it a miscellaneous admin position. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> grumbles. So many grumbles. Whew. Okay. Other questions? Oh, for anyone who didn't know, customer service representative is a CSR. And to be fair, you're not actually mad at them. You're mad at their management. Oh, I'm super mad at their management. <laughs> All right. I don't see anything else being tippy typed. Okay. Um, is anyone typing in the raffle right now? Nope. Close it. All right. I'm going to need a minute to not be mo babysitting you. Ooh, I'm sorry. Mm. Oh, that came out wrong. Ooh, okay. I see how it is. I that see how it is. so wrong. <laughs> You'll regret that statement. Holy crap okay. will you regret am that I, statement. Am I rolling one or am I telling you the number and you'll tell me how many to roll? You count the number. I'll tell you how many to roll. Right now, my gut says one, but we'll see. Okay, and to answer the question, oh, sh shit, I'm going to say it wrong. Ma Makari? Makara? Makara. Makara. This is Makara Thunderfeather, the previous leader of the pack leaders. Pretty much everybody has put that. <laughs> yeah, I would really hope so. It wasn't a secret. <laughs> yes, so she's back by popular demand. Um, she has some new art, courtesy of Locke. I'm loving her hair so much. Um, and she'll be rejoining us as running the Soul Pool Store. Store. Oh yeah, <laughs> you're you're better off counting the words I didn't swear, Cray. Um, so, all right, da -da -da. all right. So I have some TokoCon updates. Yeah, if you're like, wait, that was real. Yeah, it is. It's real. We're we're locked, loaded. People have bought tickets. Hotels are there. Um, I, hotel block is open. Hotel block is open. It is open. If you were after hotel rooms, go get one out of the hotel block. It's so much cheaper. Or go find a nearby hotel because it's Four. expensive. What? Four to people. You can have two. All right. All right. Go. So, yeah, that's that's open. TogoCon is definitely happening, everybody. It's, like, really real. You want to see how really real it is? We got a logo. That's right. That's going on shirts and stickers and maybe a bag. Like, woo-woo, TokoCon, courtesy of Cray. Um, we've got our ridiculous California, Los Angeles-based icon. Um, but we are definitely doing TokoCon this year. So if you were still, like, waiting for the punchline on that, I promise you on April 1st, I ain't going to say gotcha. <laughs> like, it's happening. I've spent too much money for it not to be. Um, as part of TokoCon, we are going to do some VIT packages. What the heck is a VIT package? Very important. Toko, that's you. Um, in your VIT package, actual price not been finalized yet, um, but this is what we are looking to have in there. And this is, you, you'll buy your at least a Saturday pass, but honestly, if you're going out to Los Angeles for Saturday for this con, you're better off just buying the entire four-day pass and then going and enjoying. There's so much nerdy stuff. At GameX, there is games, board games, and tabletop games. The vendor room is great. Crazy Dave is hilarious, and you will get some cheap, pretty earrings out of that man. Um, there is people who make, oh, like the woodworkers and the soap makers and the candlestick makers. <laughs> um, so many dice and all of the other stuff. There is something to do there. Okay. Uh, but that's, that's happening. So in the VIT, the VIT package... You will get a t-shirt with this I this logo on it and probably some funny other words. Um, there will be a lanyard with a custom badge. When you sign up for it, we will ask you to send us your favorite toko and we will put it on the custom badge for you. We have a guy that does that and we will have a lanyard that's all pretty. We're going to do a notebook, probably with a pen. The pen may not be branded, but there will be a pen. Um, there will be a sticker pack and there will be a faction and a tokocon pin. 
I don't know if I'm going to get my faction or my pin Kickstarter out in time, but I will at least have these pins. So there will be faction pins, tell us your faction, and a Tococon pin. Right now, the price is dancing between $20 and $40. I don't want it to be $40. I think it's going to come down to $30. So being a VIT is $30. You'll get all of this in some sort of bag to carry it. And that is going to be your Tococon. You can go and check the schedule in the Discord. I still have open spaces. If you've got an idea, hit me up. Def, I'm still waiting on you. You have to do a panel. You're in charge of this group. I'm doing like six. You got to do one. And we will happily move or cancel one of ours to make room for you guys. Exactly. We will move ours. We will cancel it. And if you are coming out, then, you know, be prepared that after close, we may have some Toco tea time where you can come and hang out with us and we will have alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks for everyone to enjoy. Um, and everyone keeps asking, are you going to live stream it? If I can get the tech to work, yes. 100%. I'll live stream it for you here on Discord or on Twitch or whatever. I will do it if I can get the tech functional to do it. I have asked Victor, my guy at TokoCon, GameX, TokoCon, I've asked him about it and he is looking into it for me to see what he can make happen. He can make a lot happen, so who knows? But if I can stream it, I will. If Tokos needs to buy an iPad and a power charger and a stand that it stands on to stream us for the next 12 hours, oh, yeah, maybe we will. No, we can't take Alan's because he's doing a Saber tournaments. Saber tournaments. Yeah, there's also going to be lightsaber tournaments there, okay? This is a really cool con. So that's what's coming um, for TokoCon and just your update. VIT packages will be available for sign up in April, most likely. Yep, I think we know what we want. We just need to get production time on everything and we can yeah. finalize costs. If something pops out of this package, it's because we didn't have enough time to get it produced. But most of this produces pretty quick. The pins are the only thing we're not sure on. And I'm stickers, right? Because I am going to go wild with stickers. I said sticker packs. Go for it. I gave you a budget. Spend it. I don't want it back. Well, I mean, spend it on toko things. I don't want it back. <laughs> okay. Cool, cool, cool. Um, that's TokoCon. Uh, okay, who are my winners? Take a guess. Luck of the damn devils. Okay, um, congratulations to Tina and Haru. You have won a mutation semi-custom. It can be any hereditary mutation. I mean, if you want a non-hereditary, fine, but pick a hereditary. Come on. Um, with standard semi-custom rules, including the mutation. We'll get those onto Kotna after the podcast with our usual cleanup time. Exactly. You'll see them appear on on the Tacotna after Tacotna. Weird. After the podcast. What did you say Tacotna? Because it's superior. No, I said it because you said it. My voice mimicked you and then was like, Ugh. I mean, I also would have said it like tomato wrong if you'd said it wrong. All right. Tomato. <laughs> no such thing. Okay. So that's everything for TocoCon. I have just some final stuff for the anniversary so you know that the anniversary is coming that's why we're doing TokoCon. so i have a cool little video for you it's very short we're all gonna watch it together i don't the sound's gonna go through and the sound is just super cute music you might want to like max screen it so they don't get your reddit <laughs> my guess was
Okay. So, as I said, we've got some cool stuff coming for anniversary. I have a top secret project. I'll go that's got many, many things and many artists already at work. And I have seen the work. It is so hard. You have no idea how difficult it is for me not to spoil it all. Not. I have resisted and I will continue to resist until at least May. Hopefully. With how long it took me to sell you on this idea, you're not allowed to spoil them. Just assume. We both know that that doesn't mean anything to me. You can make that demand, but it means nothing in a moment of pure, chaotic Jill energy. Mm. Okay. So, as you see, we have some fun stuff coming for the 10th anniversary. Um, keep your eyes peeled. More and more of the gear up to Toko New Year will still start happening after Festival of Flowers. Um, and, obviously, feedback forms will go up pretty soon, too. Uh, congratulations to our raffle winners. Yeah, three and a half, or not three and a half, two and a half. Only two and a half hours, everybody. Only underestimated by 30 minutes. Not bad, not bad. Okay. Cool. Anything else? Any last gasps on questions? Yeah, this is your moment. You have until I finish taking a drink of this soda can. Oh. Any chance of your guys' canceled panels becoming podcast slash YouTube vids if we end up can cutting one? Oh, yeah, if we have to cut one, we'll, we'll do something for it, because I assume most people would want those. Um, there's this new little trend going around right now. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but we'll see, where people release their audiobooks that they own on um, YouTube. So rather than doing a full-blown audiobook production, we might do the anthology that way and release it to people. That is true. Oh, should we touch on our discussion about that? Um, about going wide. Oh, right. Hey, everyone. We're talking about going wide with that, and you're like, what does that mean, Jill? Well, it means right now we're on KU. We're on Kindle Unlimited that people can read it, but my dudes, less than 200 pages have been written, written on KU. So I'm considering taking it off of Kindle Unlimited, and then I'll kick it wide. That means it'll go everywhere that my books are currently published. Um, is it Tolino? Yes. Tolino, Smashwords, Kobo, Barnes & Noble... Uh, still on Amazon, Google Play, Amazon. Or we can do direct sale through Shopify at that point. And we might be able to do some direct sale through Shopify. So if you've got a vibe on that, you know, drop it in the podcast, like the general feedback. If you would like to see us push it wide, but remember that's ebook wide. If some things that we're looking into for Moonburn, Corrupt Moon, Lunacy, Moonlight, and Glenwood stuff pan out, then we might have be able to do a more wide. We might have hardcovers. Maybe. We might have hardcovers. Amazon stuff is still messed up. Like, people were like, I'm going to wait for a hardcover, and I told you don't. Yeah, dudes, it's not better. We it's can't worse. Get a proof copy of anything. Right? Our, our third book is still in limbo for hardcovers because we can't get a proof copy. They're like, Are you sure you want it? I'm like, Yeah. I'm, I'm like, like three and a half month wait on that proof copy. So I can't put that out. So Tokos isn't doing any better on that. But if we go wide and these other prospects that Don and I are digging for our stuff pan out, Tokos will gain the benefit of that. If Tokos is in KU, it can't gain the benefit of that. So let me know your vibe if you want it to go wide or stay KU for everyone who's got it to continue reading it for free. Okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Will there be digital Toko compacts for those of us that cannot go? I mean, I figure we're going to do a run of what whatever minimum orders we have to do for the VIT packs, and then if there are any left. Oh, yeah, we'll so put we'll it up on the merch store. Yeah. yeah, we'll put that stuff up on the merch store. That's not a big deal. I don't know if there's going to be digital, digital packs, but yeah. I mean, like, it's us. By, by the time we're there, we're going to be like, but a slotless companion just for TokoCon. Yeah, it will. Like, just... surfer eye pack, surfer eye pack, slotless companion. I've sold myself. Let's go. Keep your eyes on one night art stand in in may i'm gonna there's gonna be a list where i'm gonna be like hey i'm paying rush fees <laughs> okay anything else i don't think anything yet okay then i'm gonna wrap it up here i am hungry let's eat some yeah food. thank you for joining us on this wild and chaotic day i know there was more somber news than usual out of here with the group migration stuff and mutations, mutations but we'll get those feedback threads up um 
I need at least like an hour to cool down and just chill with my kid after these podcasts. So it's not going to be five minutes from now, but keep your eyes out. We'll get feedback threads up. Everything will be awesome. We will survive group migration despite DA's best efforts to get rid of us. <laughs> okay. Have a great Saturday slash Sunday, depending on where you are. Bye, guys. Bye.